Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family. We chose this one. This is episode 103, The Blues Brothers from 1980. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Two. And this episode's brought to you by Cadillac Groundbreaking Innovation. The future is today. Super Cruise Hands Free Driver Assistance for Compatible Freeways is one of the latest forward thinking technologies finding its way into new Cadillac vehicles. Shout out Cadillac. Shout out Cadillac indeed. Well, welcome to the Blues Brothers, a last minute addition to this lap. Yeah. This was a very last minute patron pick from Justin Kleinman, who upped his pledge to make us do this movie now. Yep. So thank you, Justin, for doing that. We will talk about that after the break. But first, Joe, extracurricular activities. <laughs> and uh, in terms of like Lucy and Desi, and I don't mean to make a joke about it, but like yeah. you've got some splaining to do. I had a fucking week. I'm, I was like trying to think about where I would start this. I think I would start it to give like the whole picture of what my week was last week is that like my parents had a had a dog that was sick, right? I mentioned him on the last episode. I said, oh, they Turbo. have this dog named Turbo. You know, I was talking to my parents and my dad was saying, you know, this dog is sick. And they um, took him to the animal hospital and, you know, they found out he has diabetes. He wasn't eating and stuff. So um, they put like a glucose monitor in him and then they sent the dog back to him. They were like, get some food in him. You know, hopefully he'll be okay. I wake up, I think, Monday or Tuesday morning to just, like, frantic text messages from my mom. And it's early. Like, you know, I've been waking up to go to work kind of early, and, like, I was a little stressed about yep, work. Yep. So, like, I've been waking up kind of early. So, like, normally, like, I get up around 8. But, like, for some reason, I woke up at, like, 6, and I checked my phone. My mom's, like, call me immediately. She, you know, she was texting Rachel and I, and I was like, that's strange. So I call her. And she floored me. She's like, your father had a massive heart attack. He almost died. He's in the hospital right now. And I was just like in shock, right? Like I, I didn't yep. know what to do. So I'm like, what can we do for you? Is he okay? Like, I don't know any of these things. She's just crying and upset, right? So I'm like, okay, here, this is what we'll do is like, let me send Rachel there now, like immediately, right? So like I messaged you, Matt, Zach, and Adam. And I was like, guys, this is what's going on. Yep. I'm sending Rachel back to Pittsburgh right now. And I'm going to follow her pretty much immediately as soon as I can, like, figure out, you know, how to get work stuff done, be able to, like, hand, you know, I'm just doing a lot of stuff at work that, like, nobody else was doing. So, like, I had to, like, find people to, like, do this shit for me, right. you know, before I can, like, immediately piece, right? Like, I couldn't, yep. I had to, like, go do stuff that morning. I take Richard to the airport, drop her off. Um, I get a call from my dad, and he sounds fine. He's doing great. He had, like, this, you know, 99% blockage in one of his arteries. But the dog was sick, right? So he so he was waking up in the middle of the night to let the dog out because the dog's not feeling well. Um, he woke up in the middle of the night. He said he had chest pains. He said he drank some water, hoped it would go away. He felt a little bit better but didn't feel great. So he decided, hey, I'm going to go to the hospital just to make sure everything's okay, which is totally unlike him. I do like that, you know, the same person who, would like, would take themselves to the hospital is also like, let me just drink some water and maybe this all gets fixed. It's like yes. it's two different things. It's like those, <laughs> yeah. are, those could not be further apart on the spectrum of like things to do when your chest hurts. And they're like, no, you have to go in immediately. Like there is no time. They tell him like if he would have went back to sleep that night, like he wouldn't have woken up. Like he had like they told him he maybe had 90 minutes left to live like when he arrived there. Like they were like, you probably would have made it like an extra hour. But anyways, now he's fine. Yeah, I know. It was really nuts. That's why, like, you know, you heard the intro last time that, like, I was in Pittsburgh. I, like, I know I dipped out on some of you guys. Like, I was talking to Justin. I was talking to Wes and stuff like that. Like, I kind of just, like, abandoned the chats. But I had to go back because then I, like, went and was, you know, helping them with the store because they have their store. And then the dog is sick. Rachel's there, though. So we go through all of this. He's fine. Like, he's doing better now. He's on, like, a lot of pills and stuff. But, like, he's, you know, for all intents and purposes, he's he's good. He's healthy. He'll be fine. Um, So, like, we're making it through. You know, we had to deal with all this stuff. I'm at the store. And then, like, Friday morning, I wake up. I'm getting ready to go to the store with him because he obviously wants to go back to work immediately because he's a nut. As this is all happening, we had had to live and die in LA episode recorded, back half recorded. Yes. So we were going to record the intro Wednesday night. We're trying to figure out when we could do that. You're like, look, I think I could have like an hour here. And we figured out a time to do that. So I edited that was fine. So then I was like trying to figure out what could we do for Tuesday? And I, I rattled off like eight ideas. I'm like, if you have this much time, we could do this. If you have this much time, we could do this. If you have this yeah. much time, we could do this. If you don't have any time, here's what we could do. I send all that and I don't hear, I don't get a response. 
which I'm not expecting because I'm just like babbling. I just want to like put yeah. things out there. And then all of a sudden I get a message from you that I'm just like, wait, what? We wake up, you know, my mom's like, the dog is really sick. He's He does not looking good, right? And he's not. He's a tired bean. He's like, he's looking sad. And so she's like, look, what we're going to do is like, my dad's like, what would you do? And I'm like, look, man, I told you from the beginning, like, I hate watching animals suffer. And I know it sounds bad, but like, you know, you should probably do the, do the damn thing, right? Like, it yeah. sucks, but like, this is what you got to do. Like, take care of the dog and like, just put him down. And he's like, okay, that's what we'll do today. We like, you know, come together. We're like, okay, Rachel will go with my mom to put the dog down. So my mom's like, again, a mess. They fucking love this dog. They got the, this dog's four years old. Like, I've already been here. So like, this isn't my dog, right? It's like, not to sound mean or anything, but like, he's not my dog. I didn't grow up with this dog. They love this dog. But like, for me, it's like, it was a nice dog, whatever. We like drive back to the store. We know that they're going to go, you know, take the dog to the vet and take care of the dog. And like, as we're driving to the store, meanwhile, this is like, this is like a three minute drive from my house, right? Like we like come out my street, make the turn. I get another frantic call from my mom. The dog died between the time that we like leave the house and we like are heading to the store. We had to deal with my dad who has this sick dog who he said the whole time he's saying this dog saved my life. This was the only reason why I'm alive. If I wouldn't have woken up for the dog, you know, I'd, I'd be dead right now. Then two days later, the dog dies. And then my parents are all shook up about it. And obviously my dad's like recovering. And like, so like we had to like, Rachel and I took care of the dog for them. It was just like a long week. And I worked at the store, you know, 10 hours a day for the days that I was there. And then we'd go back up at night and try to help catch him up for the days that he missed. As of right now, everything's settled back down. We're back in Connecticut. I'll be visiting to help there more often, but that's not going to affect anything between us. Joey and I already know about this. That is why we skipped a week of episodes. We actually didn't skip a week. We just took one episode off and I really? filled it in with something that I wanted. Yeah, we we didn't miss a oh, release. Cool. That's why, you know, like everything got pushed back a week, right? Like Not even a week. No, no, not even really. Just one episode. We, just, we added an episode and we pushed Hobbs and Shaw back a week. That's it. We never cool. missed a release. Uh, I was very proud of the ability to keep continuity going. You I, did, always, yeah. I wanted to release because I wanted to put on YouTube separately. You are my lifespan because just my OCD, like I want to be able to have a playlist of everything. And I was like, I don't know how to put this out and I want to put it out. This gave the opportunity for that. I mean, obviously we didn't want that. I didn't want this to happen to have that opportunity. Yeah, I get but it. Like, That's why you got lifespan twice. That's what the fuck I've been doing for the past week. I'm glad that you guys were all cool. I'm, you know, you, some of you sent messages and stuff like that were that were optimistic and stuff like that. I didn't want to like have to type this out over and over again, right? Like I really didn't even want to think about it. Like I just didn't want to emotionally deal with it until it was like done and everything was away and I was home and I knew everything was okay. So that's why I didn't bring it up. But yeah. Meanwhile, I got hit by a skunk. <laughs> yeah, you did. I have some fun parts of stories too, but go ahead. I have like some interesting, fun things to talk about as well. So as I think I've mentioned on here before, every day I walk or jog or whatever, four mm-hmm. miles takes me about an hour and I do this thing. So as I'm walking around, especially at this night, is actually which I'm really not doing fun. anymore because it's too warm at night. So I'm now going in the morning. So this isn't going to happen cool. anymore. But okay. as I walk around at night, I look in people's windows because I'm a creep. I mean, from the sidewalk, <laughs> not like go up in the window. But I'm just like seeing if I could see what they're watching or playing or whatever. There's like a guy around the corner who's playing Hollow Knight, which is a great video game. I'm like, that rules. I'm like, how do I become friends with this guy? But like, I can't be like, hey, so I saw you were playing this video. Like, there's no, there's no cool way to go about that. No, that's the lamest thing ever. You get, you, what are you going to do? Like, leave him a note like, S- saw you through your window playing this game. <laughs> and like, it's this dude who like has a cool looking dog. Like, I've seen him sitting outside, like on the stoop. I'm just like, we could be friends. I mean, I like cool dogs. I like this video game, whatever. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. So I'm walking by a house and I see they're watching Spring Break. And it's in the scene, it's like one of my favorite scenes in the movie. It's like the montage where they're getting spoilers, they get arrested. Things go bad for the spring breakers down in Miami. Yeah. Um, or down in Florida. In that scene, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. So I'm like messaging you, I'm messaging you. Because uh, I had told my uh, the the tub talk thread my the, my friends from the fantasy baseball league I was like hey I want to become friends with this guy who was like I saw playing a video game they're like you can't do that that's creepy I was like I get yeah. it I get it but like I still would like to in an ideal world whatever so I'm messaging them and I messaged you because we love Spring Breakers I'm like hey there's a family or there's somebody I just walked by a house that's watching Spring Breakers and then as I look up I see this like big white <laughs> blob like rear up and I'm like, oh, I know exactly what this is. Cause I see, it's either a cat and I, or something. And I'm like, I don't want to be part of it. Or it's a skunk that I've seen around before. Yeah. And so I jump over it. Like I leap over it and then just 
sprint. <laughs> I smell it, and I'm like, oh. But, like, I thought I had dodged it because it didn't smell bad. Like, I could smell it, but I was like, it's not overpowering to the point where I want to die. And it's like, and, and I was asking you, like, is it just in your nose? Do you have, like, a lingering smell of it? If you would have gotten skunked, you would have gotten skunked. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if you get, like, really skunked, like, on your skin or face or chest or something, you'd have been like, oh, I'm done. Yeah, I'm messaging you, and you're like, maybe it got in your nose, whatever, because I sometimes get smells in my nose. I'm like, yeah, maybe, I don't know. But, like, I'm walking, and it's not really going away, but it's not really bad. And so I come back, and I'm, you know, cooling off, and I'm, like, taking each piece of clothing off and smelling it, and nothing, like, they all kind of, but not really smell like skunk. Yeah. And then I smell my left shoe where the skunk was, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is what he got. And my left sock a little bit, too, like, more than anything else, but the shoe especially. And so you were doing some research, you're like, you know, baking soda, you're like this, that, whatever. Yeah. So I just throw the things in the basement. I'm just like, I'll figure it out tomorrow. And so I put some baking soda on in the morning. I then put it outside in direct sunlight. Yeah, and then at the end of the, the day, when I'm bringing it in, I look and like all along the side, like these are relatively brand new shoes. Like I've worn these for probably three weeks. Like they're not yeah. expensive, but they're basically brand new shoes. And all along the lip, the rim, the bottom of the shoe, the which sole. is white. Like the side of sole. It's all white, but there's like little yellow speckles and it smells mm-hmm. like skunk. And I was like, oh, and I took the picture and you're like, oh yeah, he really got you. I was like, yeah. Got your that's, shoe. The shoes are like now in a window. Like I have them on the porch until I close the door. Then I bring them in and I put them in a window. Like it's a thing. The smell is going away. But it's like, It'll geez, like I, it could have been, not that it would have been like the end of the world, but it would have been miserable for a while. But I somehow jumped over a skunk and sprinted <laughs> because I was like, oh, hey, cool. There's some strangers watching a movie that I like, basically is what happened. <laughs> That was cool. That was basically what I've done since uh, a week ago or whenever we that recorded. That's a good premise for like an SVU episode. Ripped from the headlines. Yeah, when you creeping in the, the windows of everyone, they're like, we have to find what skunk it was. And they like use the kids, skunk hide DNA. Your wife, the skunks are coming. They use the skunk DNA from your shoe to figure out it was you who was in the bushes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything else? So what fun stuff have you done in the last week? Anything of note? Uh, so I don't know if you know about these things, but I bought one of these, like, massaging guns. I've heard of them. I don't think I've seen them, but I've heard of them. So it, it looks like a ray gun. It's, like, shaped like a pistol, right? But it, yep. then it has, like, a massager at the end of it that um I had ordered before I left, and then, you know, it came back, and when I came back, I have it, and um, I charged it up. I've been using that, and it is fucking wonderful. Highly recommend it. I got one for, like, 99 bucks on Amazon, and this thing is great. So, like, you know, there's a bunch of goofy attachments. I was using it on my feet, which is cool because, like, my feet are really sore from, like, running around all day at work. It's really hard to rub your own foot, you know what I mean? I feel bad, like, making Rachel do it. She has, like, small hands. They're not very strong, so how that works out. But, like, I got this ray gun thing, and I just, like, was sitting there, like, just blasting my foot, and it feels nice. That was one of the fun things I did. And the other fun thing was is I told you that I got, like, the Korean barbecue, like, setup thing, Mm -hmm. and I had, like, the little Coleman grill. The thing was is, like, when quarantine broke, we couldn't find, like, any of the butane canisters for the Coleman grill, like, anywhere, right? Like, I guess everybody thought, like, it was apocalypse, and they needed to, like, stock up on butane for their grills in case shit really breaks bad. But um, we finally found some yesterday, so I wanted to play with this grill. So last night we made s'mores to play with the Coleman grill inside, and today we made Korean barbecue with it. And we got to, you know, cook on the coffee table in the living room. And that was very fun. Oh, and also is that like, you know, we always talk about like what we've been watching and stuff like that. And when I was at home, my sister put us on to Superstore. You know about this? Oh, yeah. My sister loves the first. I saw the first season. My sister loves that show. Yeah. It's just like so gentle. Even the like edginess of the show is like so like glossed over. Right. Like it's just like so wholesome to me. So, like, we've been watching a lot of Superstore because the episodes are 20 minutes long. We really needed something that wasn't going to, like, emotionally drain us. So, like, Superstore was, like, the easiest shit to watch. Rachel and I have been watching, like, we watched through, like, two seasons of it since we've been home. A season in Pittsburgh and essentially a season here since we've gotten back, so. We talked about, I don't know if you're going to remember, but we talked about that very briefly on this because when we were talking about TV shows adapting COVID, like, that's one show. That's what I'm saying that, like. I was thinking that, too. Yep. That's, yep. 100%. 100%. That's going to be a great show to have, like, an episode with, like, masks on and, like, somebody wearing a mask wrong. I hadn't seen it yet. I thought the idea of this would work. Now seeing the, like, kind of gentle humor that they have, this would be perfect for it. Well, Joe, we have a Patreon page here on the show, Too Fast, Too Forever.com, and actually I posted a couple updates there so the people on Patreon knew yes. not what was going on, but that things were going to be a little askew. Yeah, sorry they were, all. like, kind of cryptic. I know, I just told Joey, like, 
I'll explain. Just like give me some time to explain. Yeah, I like so. I ran the things by because I'm like I don't. This isn't my story to tell. Like I don't. Yeah, wanna, I get it. So yeah, and I was like no, and I'm like not like uncomfortable with explain. I was like first of all, I need to make sure that everything's okay, and then I'm like okay, and when everything's fine and everybody's good and happy and healthy, then we can talk about it. So well, shout out to Cassie Wilson, Jake Freer, Ben Milliman, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleinman, Brian Rodriguez of High School Slumber Party, Haley Gerbys, Wes Hampton, Christian Larson, and Jerry Robinson. Oh. Which the five dollar level or above. Thank you all so very Thank much. Thank you guys very, very, very much. Thank you. We also have an email address on the show, family at cageclub.me. And Joe, it's been a week since we recorded, and we have a bunch of emails. A couple are longer, but most of these are quicker and shorter, so let's just get into it. Cool. Let's do it. First one from Hector, subject line, I'm back. What's up, Hector? How are you doing, buddy? I hope he liked the uh, the dating game version of his carpet. He writes in about that, so cool. just wait on. Awesome. Oh, sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit. You sure did. He says, hey, Joey, sorry that I was gone for a couple of weeks. I just had to take a little break from sending emails. Now that I'm back, I just want to say congratulations for 100 episodes of Too Fast, Too Forever Thank and you, wish sir. for 100 more. Thank you, Please sir. Please bring Brian Silliman back for more. He was very entertaining. He says, also, we keep doing so my car picks like the Bachelorette game. It made me almost die of laughter, in parentheses, not literally die. Yeah. I'll send more car picks to keep going. Gotta go. Stay fast. Stay furious. Awesome. Thank you, Hector. Yeah, we love Brian too, man. I I remember like once we finished that episode, I told Joey like, dude, we gotta get him back immediately. He's just like such a good time. I just want to go hang out with him. He seems like a really cool guy. So well, you know, if theaters, if if pandemic goes away, if we're comfortable going to movie theaters in April when F9 comes out and AMC still shows Universal, because I don't mm-hmm. know if that's happening or not. It's true. You know, he lives Very near true. near enough to join us. So so, you know, there's more Brian in our future. Yeah, I hope so. I would be I excited. I mean, as long as he's see. okay being Brian number two. Actually, I guess really Brian number three. We got Rodriguez, O'Connor, Silliman. Or is it O'Connor, Rodriguez, Silliman? I think, no. it's, I think it's Rodriguez, O'Connor. Yeah, because he pays us, and he's also, we've hung out with him in person. So, yeah. Rodriguez, I never met Paul O'Connor, Walker. Spillerman. Yeah. Next email from Ben Milliman, subject line, Stuff I Forgot. What's up, Ben? How are you doing, bud? A couple things I forgot I wanted to mention in the last email. One is something about Lila I thought was funny, weird, and made me a little proud. She apparently likes 90s and 2000s punk music. She <laughs> also likes when we drive fast. She'll get fussy when we're sitting at a light or something and wants to take off very quickly, or once we take off very quickly, she calms right down. <laughs> That's awesome. Once she was fussy, it's if I got her above 50 miles per hour, LOL. She's basically the bus from Speed. <laughs> <laughs> In a baby. Yeah. That's true. I love it. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fun. Be be safe. I know you're being a safe dad, but be safe and that's really cute that she likes it maybe you know what one of my sister's friends when she was younger was like really into like go-kart racing right that's like the stepping stones to become like a professional race car driver maybe sure. like we can hope that she becomes like you know like the next danica patrick right like yeah. that'd be really cool yeah. like maybe she just she's built for speed man you Oof. know if you're not first you're last she's just she just got it already man also because i changed companies i'm working for i've been really thinking about what i want to do i've been doing heating and plumbing for about 10 years and I kind of want to change. So mm. I've been looking into what it takes to start a food truck. Obviously, I'll be selling nachos, LOL. I think <laughs> that's it for now. That's so cool. Is there already like a an all, an all types of nachos food truck? Or would Ben have the market cornered? Not to take anything away from Ben's idea, but I'm pretty sure it's rule 37 of the internet or whatever the rule is. Like anything you think might exist, exists. Whether it's porn. Rule 34, whether it's, yeah. Rule 34, but whether it's porn or food or just any idea everything already exists so yeah and he could do like tater tots and chips and then like gluten-free chips and it could be like a build your own salad bar right like you yeah. pick like your potato or chip pick your thing and add your stuff and then he has like the here's my whatever chicken parm ones and pizza ones and yeah that'd be really cool i like the idea i don't know if i've ever told you this i definitely never told this on the podcast but what at a wendy's near ish my house growing up that we would go to every once in a while they had a salad bar, and they oh, were like three, interesting. They had like three major sections. They had like a traditional salad bar. They had a taco Mexican bar, and then what? they had a third, which was like desserts and stuff. I don't understand. It was the best. A regular <laughs> Wendy's, but it just like, <laughs> hey, we're also kind of like a restaurant, like just like a like a dinery kind of place. I'm was like, this like some kind of like trial Wendy's or something? I have Does no anybody idea. else have a Wendy's that had a salad bar at some point? I remember Pizza Hut. I was just thinking about this, like sit down Pizza Huts. You remember the sit down Pizza Hut salad sure, yeah, bar? Yeah. That was what I was remembering recently. No, this is like a, this is literally just a fast food Wendy's. Uh, that became 
it's it still exists. I don't remember what it is now, but it's another fast food place. I think it became maybe a Burger King and then it changed again or whatever. Yeah, whatever. But it was just a regular sit down Wendy's, but they also just had a salad bar. So you had like two different. I think they had like you know romaine and they had iceberg and they had yeah. all the regular fixins. Then they had like a Mexican center. That's and crazy. And they had other stuff and they had like desserts. And they had like chocolate pudding and vanilla pudding. They had what? red Jello. It was crazy. I don't know. I don't understand it. It was amazing. Dude. And then it closed okay. and I got really sad. On a related note, there's been this like thing going around that in Pittsburgh, there's like that one. Burger King, you probably don't remember it, but there's like one Burger King in Southside, and this this Burger King has been like fucking awful, and it was like the only Burger King in Pittsburgh for like a while, right? But it, but it stuck around, and it was like very strange. The Burger King got like de Burger Kinged for a while, right? Like it was like a franchise, but like they've been fucking around for years. Mm-hmm. So like at some point, Burger King was like, "We've had enough of your bullshit. You're not a Burger King anymore. Like you need to clean up your act." And instead of them doing that, they just like printed out their own menus and like started serving stuff in like foil so people okay. go to burger king and it was like they were still wearing their uniforms they were still like serving burger king like you would get like a burger king cup but like no burger king fry cup right because they were like running out of supplies and it was like the strangest thing ever so like this story has been recirculating in pittsburgh about like when burger king went rogue in pittsburgh and they just pretended like they were burger king for a while it was so strange that's what you just reminded me of talking about this wendy's that had a salad bar maybe it was just a rogue wendy's it like wasn't actually a wendy's there is a mitch hedberg joke that i hope i can find on youtube i'm gonna drop in here oh. whenever you go to like whenever you have a commercial he's like you know pr- prices and participation may vary <laughs> And he's yes, like, I want to be a McDonald's. Like, I want to be a, a pizza stubborn hut. McDonald's. A no, pizza it's hut. McDonald's. It's McDonald's. I thought it was a Pizza Hut. Okay, I want to be a stubborn ahead. McDonald's owner. Every McDonald's commercial end the same way, right? McDonald's commercials end like this. Prices and participation may vary. Now I want to open a McDonald's and not participate in anything. I want to be a stubborn McDonald's owner. I say, cheeseburgers? Nope. We got spaghetti. And blankets. But we are not affiliated with that clown. <laughs> he attracts too many children. He's like, the coupons aren't available participating locations, but I'm going to print a bunch of coupons from my location that are like, everything buy is one, one small cent. Coke, get one pizza. Oh, maybe this pizza hut. Could buy it get is. one pizza oven for free. I think Pizza Hut is the cockiest pizza chain on the planet because Pizza Hut will accept all competitors' coupons. That makes me wish I had my own pizza place. <laughs> Mitch's Pizzeria. This week's coupon, unlimited free pizza. (laughs) Special note, coupon not good at any of the Mitch's Pizza locations. (laughs) Free pizza oven with purchase. (laughs) Of a small Coke. (laughs) Two for Tuesday, buy one pizza, get one franchise free. So it's two, it's two different jokes. We were both right. Rarely happens, but we were both right. We were both right. We were just thinking about two different things. Next email from Jason Dickinson. He says, The Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift is no day. Da- is no doubt a fun Fast and Furious movie. I do enjoy it more than I did when the movie was first released. Mm-hmm. Every time I watch the trailer for it, I wonder, could it have been a much darker tone if they Ooh. kept this part of Sean firing a gun? What? I mean, that's his dad's gun, I would imagine, right? Yeah, doesn't he? He points it at someone. It's in the movie. I remember this part. He doesn't, I don't think he fires it, though. He, like, points it at someone. I mean, we haven't seen, we haven't watched the trailer. I don't know. We'll get to the trailer. We're going to do the trailer spoilers next lap. Yeah. Keep an eye out. Keep an ear out. Whatever. Next email from Justin Kleinman. Subject line, thoughts all over the place. What's up, Justin? How are you doing, bud? So I was excited for Blues Brothers next week. This was... Same. Set on Friday, so tonight. So actually, you know, a week before the episode comes out. It says, it was a favorite of mine, my dad, and my brother growing up. I'd only ever seen the edited for TV version until mm-hmm. I was around 20 years old when it was chosen to be the first DVD I ever purchased. I kind of miss the days of having movies that were edited for TV. It allowed me as a kid to watch so many movies that I can't let my son Hank watch now. <laughs> There's actually a service, I think, called, like, Clean Flicks, I think, which, like, does that, but I don't know if you want to do that. I also think that, like, Hollywood is very mad at Clean Flicks, because they're like, you don't have the rights to do this, but I think there is a service out there that does it. I can't vouch for it. I've never used it, but I think I think it's probably it, I think run there's by, like, some kind of fundamental Christian group or something weird, but yeah. I plan on rewatching this to see if it's okay for a 10-year-old, which I think it is. They say the F word a couple times, but, like, other but than that... it's not even that much. It's, it's weird. It's, like, so close to being a kid's movie, and then it just not at certain points it's like ah, i don't know what are you doing it's a weird blend i don't think there's any nudity or anything in it either i don't right? think so no, no i don't not that i remember off the top of my head so 
Or drugs. Uh, I mean, behind the scenes. We'll talk about that, too. We'll get there, yeah. Justin says he loves music so much that I think he would love it just as much as I did as a kid. I think the scene with Carrie Fisher and the machine gun at the end may need to be skipped. Hank's used to plenty of cursing from his mother, but even that <laughs> scene may be too much. Okay, fair, maybe. fair enough, yeah. Every night when we're going to bed, Vonnie seems to decide that it's the, it's the best time to unload all of her serious thoughts for the day. This is terrible, because I generally run such a sleep deficit that it can be hard to stay awake. Well, last night I was half asleep, and she said something about there being food all over the place. <laughs> I sat up and said, food all over the place? I expected her to laugh about the joke, but she just looked at me seriously. It wasn't a joke, she actually used the phrase. What? I laid Why? down and then fell asleep. So today... I texted her and asked, why did you say food all over the place last night? She responded, what? I think you were dreaming. Oh, wow. my God. Wow. Oh, my God. He had a, he had a dream that she Too fast, too forever dream. <laughs> wow. wow. That's a level of inception that I hope that we never get to again for you, Oof. brother. Yeah. Oof. I apologize. <laughs> God damn. Will the top fall over? Will the spinning top fall over? I yeah, does it ever you. fall? Oh, God. Also, earlier this week, I was told by two friends of mine who don't know each other, but are both big Fast and Furious fans, I need to check out a certain movie podcast because they did a month dedicated to Fast and Furious. Interesting. Awfully serendipitous, so I had to check it out. I'll link to it below. Cool. He sends another email later. He says he forgot the link to it. It could give you some good options for possible guests to join future podcasts. Anyway, it's interesting to hear some people outside of our own bubble bring forth some new quote-unquote facts I had never heard, as well as some hot takes. My favorite thought is this. Rico and Tego are actually lovers. And the lone supporting fact of this is how Rico complains about Tego's cooking. Uh, I, for some reason, always thought they were brothers. But now this is a fact for me, and I will be looking for more clues in rewatches. That is mind-blowing. Yeah, see, I always assumed they were brothers or, like, really close cousins, right? Cousins that grew up together is what I kind of assumed that they were. Right. Like, same household, they've been together forever kind of thing. Like, even more than, like, friends that have been together forever, like, they were, like, in the same house, in my mind. But the idea that they could be lovers is very interesting. Lastly, regarding Honky Tonk, I was fortunate to get to see both Waylon and Merle do shows before they passed away. Oh. Waylon was free in Chicago, oh. although he had some troubles with playing different songs in his band a few times. He was great... <laughs> He was great fun in his crowd interactions. The highlight of Merle was him setting down his guitar for a fiddle and dueling the fiddler player in his band. I had no idea he was so good. I'm super jealous. I was thinking, okay, so as I was watching Blues Brothers, just like a tiny tidbit, you know, I knew Justin picked it, and you have the whole, like, honky-tonk scene, and I was wondering, remember how a couple weeks ago, or days, whatever, ago... I had said I really love classic honky tonk music, and Justin was saying he loves it too. And I wonder if that kind of inspired him to pick Blues Brothers, or if that connected something in his brain. Because I hadn't remembered the honky tonk part of this movie because I haven't seen it in fucking forever. We were just talking about honky tonk movies, and he was also messaging me about honky tonk music. And I was wondering if these things overlapped. So I'm curious to hear what Justin has to say about that. Maybe we'll find out. Justin, write in family. You know, family. I can't yeah, of course. Yeah. Then he sent the link to the thing. I sent it over to you on Facebook. It's a MaximumFun.org podcast called Who Shot Ya? This is episode mm. 142, The Fast Cast Part 1. So check that out shortly. Next email is from Jerry Robinson, subject line, Stickers. What up, Jerry? How are you doing, bud? He says, hey, guys, so I finally got a spot for one of my stickers. This is on my dash of my work car, a 2019 Ooh. Prius. Well, don't tell Justin you're driving a Prius because that might be mad. <laughs> Yeah, he'll, you'll get it. Justin, I'm so again. sorry on this Blues Brothers episode that you are, you have to hear about a Prius. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good place for it. Jerry, this looks great. Thank you, brother. That's awesome. Very, very, very cool. I love that you guys put them on your cars. Like, I, I, I guess that that's like the most appropriate place for it, but like, I never thought about it. So like, when you guys send us a picture, you're like, I put it on my car. It's like, that makes perfect sense and something that I'm always still shocked by. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Next email from Nick Burris. Subject line, so far away, so behind. Ever since Brian's slumber party high school, I feel like I have homework that I can't complete on time. Much love. What up, Nick? How are you doing, brother? Says, I had something for American Graffiti, but I lost my notes. So, on to the Italian job. Okay, cool. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> That's a, it's Done. A, we're not going to judge you for the, the, the dog ate your homework. It's okay. No, exactly. It's totally fine. We take all excuses here. So this is now the Italian job. The original, he says, I thought it was quirky and weird and didn't like the end. But after hearing you talk about it, I found myself laughing more at reminiscing. I did like the girlfriend beating him up with a fuzzy yes. rubber chicken. I think the ending was pretty good. I don't know how you, yeah. how didn't you like it, bud? I don't know. What's wrong with the ending, man? It was a good, I like the kind of cliff, literal cliffhanger ending. Literal right? cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. 
I wonder where the term came from. Probably older than that. Probably yeah. much older than that, but like I that's a so. literal cliffhanger, right? Yeah. It says bulldozers were popular at stopping cars in the 70s. Apparently, <laughs> we've learned that. <laughs> yep. He says, I didn't like the ending, but when I heard they were lining up for a sequel, it makes more sense, which we did talk about, yeah. That yes, they were going to yes, have yes, like yes, a yes. way to get out of it or whatever. And it was going to be like starting right there, kind of, yeah. So I know by the time this email reaches you, will be close to the end of the lap, but I was talking to my dad about this lap and the movies, and he mentions Le Mans and Grand Prix were good movies. Mm. We have those on our list for the next time we do this. So we will cover those, I promise. This lap we added. So basically when Justin added this movie i took a movie out of rotation and then i added that movie back in when we pushed everything back a week yes so it's still where we were at originally uh but we are going to cover both of those on a future lap so don't worry about that nick or nick's dad we will talk about both those movies in the future. yeah that's cute that you talked about this with your dad too because i like this was like one of my favorite parts of this lap was calling my dad i've been mentioning it and telling him like oh we just watched Smokey and the bandit and him being like oh man i fucking love like i called him this morning i was like we watched blues brothers last night he was like man that scene when they like point all the guns at them at the end like that's like one of the funniest things to me so i'm glad that you could reminisce this is like a very good like father son reminiscent right like you call your dad and be like when was the last time you watched blues brothers and he's always going to get excited about it so yeah uh, he says james taylor has a book out which he mentions a movie but he doesn't go into detail but it's a very good book did you know that the beatles gave him his start or helped no i did not Ooh, know that that's very cool i didn't know that that's cool this is a minute 60 oh i guess the fast and furious minute which would have been nine minutes ago for us i think when yeah. they're talking about the team i think it might have meant when letty turned 16 she got her license didn't think at first, but I think this now. He says, Jesse is in the group when heisting because Letty has a bad feeling about the last job. It does say, I don't think we should be doing this without Jesse. Minute mm-hmm. 60. So, okay. Okay. Makes sense. Minute yeah. 61. I know it was planned to do the heist when Brian was on the date. Truck drivers have a schedule and certain times the load needs to be delivered. And all of them were sleeper trucks. So they were going a decent distance. Inside. Okay. Like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, good. I like that. So it's gone in 60. I've seen it a long time ago. But interesting that they played or they were insurance people. I forget the little things like that. Yeah. He says, but the remake, it's a Shelby GT500, not a Cobra. Besides the original Shelby Cobra, the Mustangs were not subnamed Cobra until the late 70s. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's cool. Like, they had the Cobra badging on them, though. Maybe that's an aftermarket thing. I don't know. No, 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 no. I, I really think that they had, like, the Cobra badging on it, but they probably just didn't, like, name it. Interesting. Or maybe they didn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm no just, idea. like, putting it there. Yeah. So the thing of Lego we're going to do with 1327 it needs to be scaled so it'll fit the charger in the garage. I know they can do it. That would be huge. That would be amazing. Oh Dude, if if you see how big this charger is, like the Lego set charger, if it was scaled, like it would be the thirteen twenty seven would be like as big as a room. Isn't the car like one sixteenth scale? I think that's oh, what maybe. it said it was. So like one sixteenth is like oh, the house would be one sixteenth of the size of the house, right? He says, I know they can do it. I've seen some of those big ass Star Wars models. And actually I just sent you a link today that they are officially announced yes. they're doing yeah. the Home Alone house, which looks amazing, and they're doing the Seinfeld apartment, which is also very, very cool. Yes, one of the last ones, like right before the um, Fast and the Furious one came out, the the Charger, they had the Friends Cafe. I was going to get it for Rachel, but I don't know if we talked about this. I'm not a huge Friends fan. Like, I've seen all the episodes. I don't think it's that great, especially when you put it in comparison that, like, it it ran before or after Seinfeld. And I think Seinfeld's just such, such a perfect sitcom that, like, it's hard to compare the two. And, like, anybody that tells you that Friends is the best show ever never watched Seinfeld. It's like the Breaking Bad or versus The Wire show. thing. Yeah, yeah. I was going to get this for Rachel, and she was she's now gotten on my side. Friends is okay, but it's not that funny, especially when you watch it compared to Seinfeld. I've only seen two episodes of Friends, which is, eh, maybe about the same as Seinfeld. Uh, I've seen the first episode, the pilot, and the finale. Like, I feel like Friends is the kind of show, given that I've seen everything but except i'm missing obviously big things like i haven't seen seinfeld i haven't seen a lot of the simpsons whatever Mm -hmm. but i feel like friends is the type of show that i should have seen but i asked my friend and i was like should i watch friends and he said if you watch friends instead of everything else that you quote unquote should watch i will kill you i was like okay i guess i'm not gonna watch 100 percent agree with him like if you put on if you were like i started friends and you've never watched seinfeld before i'd be like you're a fucking idiot like well no yeah i wouldn't do that like i would do like there's still but there's like my lit my oh boy my list is too big my list is too big anyway nick also sends the next email saying get my ass in gear he says saw this driving and took it as a sign to get caught Mm. up and watch these movies I like to watch before I listen. He says, I haven't seen this truck since the first pick. So this one was supposed to be the first, but next stop, Back to the Future, Midnight Run, and Ronin next week. 
So now I need to start leaving earlier when going to New Jersey so I have more time when I get there. Anyways, tail oh lights, bitch. God. Nick. He saw this picture in a while ago. So, yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pockets ain't empty, cuz. Yes. It's It was hard to expand it in Discord. I had to put my face really, really close to it to try to see what was going on here, but yes. Nick has, like, four things going on. He's got a camera filming. He's got, like, two GPSs. He's got his phone for music or maybe podcasts. This is a serious setup you got there, Nick. Boy, well, you know, he's trucking. That's his job. I know. I get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so, that's what he's doing, man. I mean, and the camera's a cool move, because, like, you know, you don't want, like, anybody doing something weird and him getting in trouble driving so right uh then hector sends in a car picture so we'll save that for later cool then ben sends another email saying is etion a we not an i so i've been watching hobbs and shaw again and i've been listening closer to the voice and i know people say it sounds like different people well what if it is different people so instead of a big bad guy it's a group of bad people doing the voice that way in bad fast all over the place belt, maybe we will get the fam against bad guys from across the whole series what do you think you know we've talked about this i i ultimately want all the bad guys to come back and kind of like band together and then be like their own evil family versus our fam- like you know bring back Braga. I still think we could have both. Like, I think the voice DK. could be one person and they could all just be within the same organization, right? Like, True. Etienne is definitely a we. I think, I know Ben's asking, like, is the top, is the head boss a Two multi- like a group of people? Yeah. But I, I feel like if, and this is, again, this is what we've been talking about a lot lately, if Cypher is part of Etienne, are we saying that, like, Braga or whoever is above her? Like, it just feels that, I don't, I don't know. No, I, there's I don't somebody that... above her, but it will also be, like, there's somebody above her, but it's also, there's more people. Yeah, I think it could be, like, a collective. I mean, I guess it could be, like, anonymous, like, we are legion, right? Like, yes, just, you know, exactly. Whatever, so. Yep, yep, know. yep, agreed. Then our next two emails are very quick comments on our Patreon post. Alex Ellenin said, hope everything's okay, and then Haley said, stay safe, fam, we're thinking of you, XOXO. Well, everything is okay and thank you guys for checking in and sending love i appreciate it but everything is doing good yeah thank you guys next email from ben milliman subject line father's day i'm not sure how many of our familia are fathers but i want to wish them all a happy father's day and ben happy father's day happy first father's day to you i hope it was yeah. great yeah Oh, that's right. We have a bunch of dads now. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I hope you guys all drank Coronas, and I hope you got to eat the first piece of chicken. And our last email, also from Nick, said, had to pull over for my awesome theory. He says, just listen to the Back to the Future episode. Okay. My theory is that Mr. Nobody is part of Sector 7, the super secret government in Transformers, which are aliens, and in the first one, Optimus Prime says they've been hiding in plain sight for many years. What if the cars they love so much are actually Transformers in disguise? Plus... Robots in disguise. Think Dom went back in time to get Han? Question mark? Okay, back to the road again. Tail lights, bitch, Nick. There's a lot to Ooh. unpack in that email. The cars being Transformers is is dope. I'm, I'm about it. Yep. Dom going back in time to get Han. Gotta go back in time. Yeah, are these are these things happening simultaneously? Are the cars transformers and there's also a time machine, or are these two separate thoughts? Do you think? Well, I mean, who, there's no limit to things. I would like. I don't know if I'd rather have Mister Nobody be Men in Black or Transformers. I feel like. I feel like Men in Black for me for Mister Nobody. I feel like they're both equally possible and simultaneously unlikely. Like they're both a very highly. Sense. Unlikely. They're also both crazy. I would like Transformers to be the cars. I would like Mr. Nobody to be Men in Black, and I also like the idea of Dom using a time machine to get Han. But, like, all separately. You know what I mean? Like, no weird crossovers, right? Like, Don't cross Well, that is a giant weird crossover, but you know what I'm saying? Like, compartmentalize them that they're all three separate plot lines. Yeah. Well, that's all the emails for today. Thank you all for writing in. We had, that was basically two episodes worth of emails. If you want to write in, family at cageclub.me. Actually, two other updates. I want to to remind people, number one, Yep. Voting for the Fast and Furious Hall of Fame is now open at cageclub.me slash bracket. I need to do it again. I already put in one when we first, before we even released it, I did my first one. I think, I, I think I'm think i ready mentally to do my second one. Also right now, if you want to vote on more things, also at cageclub.me slash bracket, there is the Cruise Club Awards, the Cruisies. I haven't done that on one yet. Tom Cruise Awards. I'm and also Brian, High School Summer Party Rodriguez's sophomore year superlatives. That one I vote did. Vote on all those. Go vote for all the identity theft of a cheerleader things you can. <laughs> That's what I did. I just identity theft of a cheerleader down the line. Like he threw it into like a bunch of different he superlatives. He did a lot of it. Yep. Yeah, and I was like, okay, cool, and I just used all of them. I voted for all of those. The other thing should have gone in extracurricular activities, but I did not think of it. It's a story that I told you, but I was looking in my email as I closed my email from 
getting like reading what people sent us. So I wanted to buy a wicker chair set for my front oh, porch. Yeah, this is a cool story. I like and this. And I was like looking at a set on Home Depot and a home a set a set at Lowe's and a set at Target. Yeah. And they were all like four to five hundred dollars. I was like, it's kind of a lot of money, but like now especially since I'm spending more time outside, the chairs they have out there are Why fine, not? but they're not yeah. great. I want to make it look nicer, I want to be more comfortable. Yeah. I want Ottomans, whatever. The Target set was the most expensive. I'm like, look, this is the one that I want it's a difference of $100, but if I'm going to use it every day and it's going to last hopefully for years... And if you're going to spend $400, yes. it, like, that's like one of those price points where it's like, what's the difference between 400 and 500 right? Like, right. it's not like 50 and 1000 it's like 400 yes. 500 You're like, okay, exactly. yeah, it's close enough. Get the one you want, yeah. And especially since, like, I haven't, like, I haven't been going out to eat and I've been saving a lot of money, I was like, let me yep. just splurge a little bit, get something nice. And so I'm looking, and I know that, like, there's different extensions, like there's Honey and there's different, you know, Retail Me Not, and I'm trying all these different yep. coupons. Yep, Because I know the Target always has, like, 10% off or 5% off or get a $50 gift card or whatever. I'm like, there's got to be something that applies to this. And, like, especially since now is, like, summer season, they're probably trying to get people to, like, just, hey, Come we're back still open. Come back yeah, Exactly. Yep. And nothing is working. I'm like, let me just check the app because I know that Target Cartwheel has, like, promotions and stuff like that. And I'm looking and there's nothing. There's no discounts there's no whatever lame so i just go to the item i'm like let me just i, I had literally my phone in my hand let me just go to the item the default on the web is these red cushions and i was like they're kind of cool but like i think i'm gonna go blue because i have a blue rug out there that my friend bought me as a ho- housewarming gift yeah kind of matches it's more it's like less of an obnoxious color yep and i tap on the blue cushions and it's 50 percent off and i was like what and so this 550 dollars set which is two chairs two ottomans and awesome. the table goes down at 275 and I was like awesome I like almost started like I didn't but I almost started shaking like I I, I broke I hacked the matrix I was just like I don't <laughs> like this can't be like why would a different color cushion be half price don't ask questions and there were like five colors I think one was out of stock two were half off and then two were full price and I was like well, let me go get my credit card right now and I'm gonna buy this right now and then yeah. I have the target credit cards like another five percent off so basically Perfect. instead of spending like 590 dollars i spent like 275 i was like this is that's I awesome could, dude it could not be better and i know that you always love like it's not I a hack like, this wasn't a hack it. like i didn't beat no. the system but it was just like a i don't know why this worked or i don't know why this is the way it is but it was great something really gets me going about like you know I, i've talked about this before i chase airline miles so something get like the rush of the deal always gets me going and I was like talking to my dad about this when I was home I like fucking the airlines because it's a fun game and it's kind of like a criminal being chased right like you're trying to get over on them except if I get caught I can't get arrested for it like I push the boundaries on what you can do with airline miles and deals and stuff like that like I've definitely done some stuff that's in a weird gray area at the same time it's like I'm not like committing fraud okay they would just be like no we're not gonna do that I love it I'm glad that you got this good deal and I can't wait to see your furniture and hopefully we have a barbecue meetup soon so I can sit on your lovely blue couch co- your outside patio cushion. I hope so I also like self not selfishly but I was like I don't mind spending the extra money because the Home Depot set wouldn't be here until the end of July and I was like that's a long time and this was like you get it on Tuesday so I ordered it yesterday yeah, on dude. Tuesday and Fuck it's gonna yeah. be here on Friday like it's gonna be here in three days I was like oh okay free delivery it comes perfect. assembled perfect I couldn't ask for more can't ask for more I love it brother good Ooh. for you Okay, on the streets, Fast and Furious news. Is there anything that you've seen? I have one thing that's adjacent, no. but it's not actual news. So here's the only thing that I found. Go ahead. Patron of the show, Melissa Lynham, sent this to me on Instagram today. I've got gossip in the dating world. Okay, tell me. Your boy. Who? Timothy Chalamet. Oh, Rachel told me this. Go ahead. Is she now told me. in a relationship or seeing or dating or whatever mm-hmm. Go ahead, Hollywood say it. phrase is for banging Isaac Gonzalez, a.k.a. Madam M. Yep. From... Hobbs and Shaw, and yes. I don't understand it on her part. I am, <laughs> I don't see the appeal into it. Like, I think he's a great actor. This is a very Pete Davidson situation, isn't it? I mean, I don't want to get into, like, I don't want to shame no. anybody. I just don't no. understand beautiful, beautiful, beautiful women. Hey, man, look at me. You just have to be, you have to be quirky and weird, and that's about it. I, guess I so. was shooting way out of my league for a very long time, so... <laughs> Well, Joe, only one other thing to do before we take a break is the Fast and Furious Minute Minute 69, and I... Nice! Nice! Wait, wait, you didn't even get paused for me to... Nice. Minute 69, and I didn't put the quote in here because I think we might want to... Okay, before we say the quote, before we say the minute title, 
This is a great minute in the movie. Excellent. That we have almost nothing to talk about in this minute. <laughs> no, I have two cool things, but go ahead. The quote from this, which Ben has written in before, that he said to his in-laws before, oh, I yeah. feel like that might be the trivia question, possibly. So I Ugh. didn't want to put that in the title. It's kind of obvious. I just don't know what else to ask. So for now, temporarily, whatever it is you're in on, I want in on it too. Who's that cool of yours? That's your meal ticket. My meal ticket. Well, I, I can't pay for my own shrimp. I got the shrimp. No, see, that's one thing about me, Dom. You don't understand. I don't need handouts. I don't take handouts. I earn my way every step. That's gotta make a little something extra on the side, like you. What do you mean, like me? What's that supposed to mean? That's what I mean. What does that mean, like me? Don't talk. I'm not stupid. All right. I know that there's no way in hell you paid for all that shit that you got under the hood. Of the I know there's no way in hell that you paid for all that shit that's under the hood of those cars by doing tune-ups and selling groceries. Now, whatever it is you're in on, I want in on it, too. So in this minute, Brian and Dom continue their lunchtime conversation at Neptune's Net. Brian confronts Dom about his side hustle Mm -hmm. he wants in, and then Dom begins to pass Brian a note. Again, uh, we've said this a million times, though. This is a really Mm well-contained... It's perfect. It's like, right before Dom starts talking, we get everything. It's perfect. So the only real thing that I have, and has nothing to do with this minute, is that throughout this entire Fast and Furious minute document, I have referenced this every time I link to it, There is a YouTube video of the entire BT score, like an hour and seven minutes, broken down by song, by chapter. I click on it today. This user has deleted their YouTube channel. And I was like, no, "No." the score as from what I can exist, from what I can gather, the score does not exist on Amazon. Like I can't buy it. I I haven't looked on eBay yet. It's just not out there. And I, what was really frustrating to me was that this YouTube video was beautifully sequenced in order of the movie. And then I found it like a track listing on like a, a on Discogs or something. And it looks out of order, which doesn't make any sense. Uh... So I, like, my real one go-to, because in this minute, oh, there is fuck. like a song that's like playing very faintly in the background, like an actual like radio song. Yeah. I don't know what it is at Neptune's Net, and then it goes into the score. And so I Googled, like, what's the song playing at Neptune's Net, and, like, I can't find it that way. And I'm so disheartened, because, like, this super cool... Like, the guy didn't do it for us, or whoever this did, it was didn't do it for us, but I was like, this is the ultimate tool I have. And you didn't have it, like, saved quickly. or cached somewhere? No, I should have... I, should, I, I, I never thought it would go away, because I was like... It's so stupid, right? It's so innocuous. Like, if it's been up for copyright reasons... I didn't think the guy was going to delete his channel, but, like, it's been up for months. Like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, literally every minute we've, so 69, probably, yeah. This has been close to a year that we've been doing this, right? Because we did two a week, but we did one a week for, for before that. And, oh man, it's been, you know, a year. I should have, damn it. We'll figure it out. We'll we'll get, we'll, we'll figure it out. We will. We'll have a new solution, I'm sure. Anyway, okay, what do you have? What's your big takeaways? Because I don't, there's not much for me in this minute, but what did you find uh, in Neptune's Net? Okay, so I had a question for you, and you might have to go rewatch the minute. Book ending... Brian and Dom, and actually, you know what? Wes may know the answer to this too, because he's been to Neptune's Net. Book ending Brian and Dom on opposite sides along the railing. It looks like there's two stainless steel ashtrays attached to the railing. Did you notice these? No, I gotta take another look. Hold on. I can't imagine what else they would be, right? There's like two things there. It's not like they're like like they're attached to the railing. And it looks like you could you used to be able to like stand at the railing and smoke, but it also doesn't fit next it to the table. It almost tables. looks like elementary school like water fountains, but it's clearly not those. Like they have the same kind of shape. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? It's like a bowl. So I'm thinking it's it's probably an ashtray, right? Yeah, I would guess it's probably ashtray. But I would, they just are an inconvenient spot or a convenient spot, depending on how you feel about this. I mean, I guess it's probably like while you're, I mean, it's, I don't know, because like there's tables there, but it, it almost feels like the kind of place where you can just stand there and like admire the ocean and then just like ash your cigarette. But like there's tables there. So it's, I don't, I don't know. It's a weird. Yeah. Like why wouldn't you want to put the table right next to the ashtray so you would like smoke at your table as opposed to like standing next to another table and then smoke near them and the other thing was you know looked on the table i mean there's 
really nothing on this table besides like shrimp and a tray, right? They do have hot sauce on the table. So I was asking Rachel, do you think this is Texas Pete's? It kind of looks like the Texas Pete's kind of hot sauce bottle. And so she's like, why don't you go to Yelp? And see pictures of Neptune's net now. Oh. They probably use the same hot sauce, right? And what I discovered was is they no longer stock any of these things that are on the table. So we can't use that. But I thought that Damn. was interesting anyways. That, you know, they used to keep hot sauce, salt, pepper, napkin holder on the tables. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, so those were my two big takeaways from that. I, I didn't get any of the cars in the background. You can't read the signs because there's, you know, focused on the faces and stuff like that. We also don't really get a sense of the people at the tables around Brian and Dom. There is a couple, a guy in a wetsuit that has the top half. I want to call it unbuttoned. It's not unbuttoned. Maybe unzipped. He's just unzipped. got it flapping around yeah. his waist. And a girl in a bikini walk by. They sit down behind Brian. We see another couple of women in, like, cover-ups, I think. It's like the like the thin Shaws. sheer whatever. Yeah. Sarong, yeah. Sarong, yes. As they walk by, just like they have the swimsuit on underneath, and they walk by just, you know, just so that they're not just walking around, like, in a bikini or whatever. So they walk by. We don't really see anybody new. I thought for a second that the guy in the swim pants, the surf pants, and the girl in the bikini we'd seen outside, but it wasn't them. So the guy with the, remember we had that whole conversation about like the yes. surfboard or surf shorts or surf pants mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's the guy at the table closest to the camera. Okay. So we had talked about that last minute, but I, in my brain, cause we haven't done that in a week. I was like, did we, cause I remember seeing somebody with those pants, but it's like, it's not, it's the other guy. So he's yeah. in here. It's just a different guy also. So yes, it makes sense. Makes sense. I follow. Yeah. Anything else about this minute, minute 69, before we uh, come up with a trivia question? I actually kind of like how, going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say it was intentionally bare in this scene to focus intently on Dom and Brian and this conversation. As much as there is stuff in the background, it's like out of focus and so bare that you're like really honed in on what they're saying. Which yeah. is cool. So now the trivia question, the it's I think it's obvious, although I don't I just don't know what else to ask. What are Brian and Dom eating for lunch at Neptune's Net? I had a question that's kind of similar. I'm gonna throw it at you. Tell me what you think. I was going my question was gonna be what is Brian's meal ticket? Oh, okay. How do you like that? That was my thoughts when I was watching the minute. We could do both. Because I think there's like an easy one and a hard one. It's like, oh, I got this one. I got, I can, I can do this. And it's like, wait a minute, I don't know. But I don't know what the other answers are. Can you help me get the other what answers for that one? What does Dom say Brian's quote meal ticket is? Okay, so first let's do the eating for lunch. So we got shrimp, obviously. We could do uh, lobster rolls. Oh. Chicken sandwiches. Yeah. And one of the tune on tune on rye, no crust. Tune on white, <laughs> no crust. And then what does Dom say Brian's meal ticket is? So quote, it's what does he say? That cool of yours. So, yeah. quote, his, his, quote, cool. His cool demeanor, his lead foot. Yeah. Now, is, is his level-headedness, is that too different? Or is that too similar? No, that's that's different enough. The cool demeanor and level-headedness, I think, are different. His level-headedness, his cool demeanor, his lead foot, his level-headedness, and we could just say his sweet, <laughs> his blue, blue eyes. I was going to say that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that sweet, sweet ass of yours, Brian. So what are Brian and Dom eating for lunch at Neptune's Net? Of course, shrimp. And what does Dom say Brian's meal ticket is? His cool demeanor. Perfect. I love it. That was good. I that, Yeah, cool. I'm glad. Yeah, that worked. So Joe, let's take a break. Let us come back and hear a word from our sponsor. Let's talk about the Blues Brothers 2000. That's the one you wanted us to talk about, right, Justin? The Blues Brothers 2000? <laughs> This is episode number 103, The Blues Brothers. This episode is brought to you by Dodge. The Dodge brand vehicle is for everyone, and they offer special offers and incentives to make it worth your while, from deals for military members to FCA, USA, LLC employee discounts, dealer cash incentives, and FCA, US, LLC affiliate company codes. They encourage you to check out their deals in your area so you can buy or lease a new Dodge brand vehicle today. Shout out, Dodge. Sometimes you just need a new Dodge. You know, sometimes an old car doesn't work. 
You need yeah, Dodge? Doing, Thank you, Dodge. Yeah, they're doing 4th of July um, $10 per horsepower power dollars cash allowance right now. Oof. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Fourth of July special, yeah, man. Well, so thank you to Justin for suggesting the Blues Brothers. It was on our list of car movies to do, but we did not have it in this lap, but we did it now. So if anybody has not seen the Blues Brothers, it's basically Jake Blues, who is John Belushi, is just out of jail. Is yep. picked up in a, by his brother, Dan Aykroyd, who plays yep. Elwood Blues. He picks him up in a cop car. Yes. A Dodge Monaco yep. from jail. The irony yep. of that is so beautiful. That's how the movie like kind of starts after the weird industrialization part. Yes. And they're on a mission from God to raise funds for the orphanage where they grew up. The only thing they can do is what they do best, play music. So they get the old band back together and set it on their way while getting into a bit of trouble here and there. They have to go see the penguin, as they call her, which is awesome. And Rachel somehow didn't connect that the penguin was the nun until like, oh. they were in the nun's office. I was well, like, I was thinking about that as a double Joe connection because, of course, penguins, number one, you love the penguins, true. but number two, also corporal punishment from an authority figure in a religious institution, because she beats the shit out of the Blues Brothers, and you have gotten wrapped on your fan, in your hands and your body, whatever, by nuns. Actually, on that, yes, I, I, you know, spent 12 years in Catholic school, so I was telling Rachel, I have no idea how there's, I have not met not one nice nun in my entire life. They're all just miserable. Giving your life to God or something really pisses you off. So that's what they, <laughs> they've I've never met one that was like, I'm so joyous to like teach you guys. Um, a funny Catholic school story that wasn't with the nun though. As we were watching, you know, the scene with the penguin at the very beginning, I remember the story when we were in high school, we had this, um, latin teacher that we used to like fuck with a lot right he was a little crazy we'd fuck with him a lot and one of my favorite pranks like pretty much we would go into class every day and just try to like pull off a very elaborate prank that was like our whole day right like we would like okay yeah yeah yeah. we'd plan it in other classes we'd come together somebody would like pitch we'd all pitch our ideas and whoever had the best like dumbest idea that's what we would do and one of my favorite like most innocuous ones because like some of them were like very terrible and we should have been beaten for them (laughs) but like one of my favorite favorite most innocuous ones was we knew he would be writing on the board that day and he didn't do that often because we'd always fuck with him as soon as you turn around we were sitting there and we decided that we would just inch our desks up every time he'd turn around so like every time he would go to like and turn around and write something on the board everybody would just be like hut and like pick up like pick up their desk and move like one step forward 25 30 minutes into class like my one friend who was in the first row had his desk on top of the teacher's desk because you know you have like those high school desks right yeah yep. and it's like one panel like his desk was covering the teacher like his his chair was so close his knees were like into the teacher's desk and then two of my other friends had like reached the their goal was to reach the blackboard up against the front wall and so like we kept just like moving up moving up moving up until they were like on both sides of him and like two kids were like at his desk and like he was just like surrounded like we had like encroached him they're moving around in the desks you you see them trying to like scurry back did he ever catch on to it did he catch on to it oh absolutely i mean yeah yeah i mean he was crazy but not like you know completely senile right like he was eventually like what the fuck are you guys doing and then he would get mad and he would like run to go grab like somebody to yell at us that like had authority and by the time he would do it we would like rearrange everything back right so then like the dean of discipline would come down he'd be like they moved all the desks everywhere and we'd be like we've just been sitting here he's crazy (laughs) you know what i mean like we move all of our desks back into like the right spot and we're like i don't know what he's talking about and like because if you get like the whole class in on it then yeah so it was just like you know we were playing this game forever but that's that was one of my favorite high school moments like i just see my friend with his like where he turns around and his desk is overlapping the teachers it was great that was one of my favorite. Yeah. That definitely. reminds me, it's not nearly as good of a story, but my seventh grade math teacher was named Mr. Butts. Not a joke. Okay. Mr. Butts with a Z, B U T T Z. And he was he was a fine teacher. He wasn't a great teacher, but he was a fine teacher. He was just an old dude, and he would teach yeah. from his desk at the back of the class. And he would be like, instead of having instead of him writing on the board, this is what it reminded me, instead of him writing on the board, he would have a, a student go up there and basically write for him. Like he would sort of talk okay. through whatever. So it was an interesting yeah. thing. But it was also kind of like a, he's just an old dude, he doesn't want to move, whatever. The once or twice per year that the he was being evaluated, like because you know principal or whoever would come around do evaluations, yep. to make sure that all his teachers yep. were doing everything. He was a complete 180, like up at the front of the room, like gesturing wildly and be like, "Look at me! Like I'll get how great of a teacher I am." And just like, guy, like who are you fooling? Like nobody, <laughs> like we know that you're. This isn't you. And like the principal <laughs> has to know it's not you either, because like 179 yeah. days out of the year, he's sitting in the back of the classroom, just like yeah, and then go up there and then that 
said, what do you do? And then this one day, he's like, all right, and then here we go, and I'm going to show you math. It's like, all right, <laughs> guy, what are you doing, my man? Yeah, relax, bud. Yeah. That's awesome, though. Anyway, like the Blues Brothers... Here's what surprised me a little bit. When was the last time you've seen this, by the way? Sorry. before. Well, so just... I've only seen it once before. I was telling you last night that when I was in college, I watched a lot of classic movies. Both, yes. you know, old, like, vintage, like, 40s, 50s, 60s. Like, a lot of movies that are considered, like, the best movies or the most fun movies for people's, like, beloved movies, I've only seen really once. And yep. I was in college, like, usually, like, over the summer when I wasn't working, I would have just like watch a movie or two a day and I would go to the library and rent out like five movies and watch those then go get another five and I had Netflix and whatever and it's yeah. just an ongoing thing I was just like consuming so many of these movies that I've only seen once so I saw it then and I haven't seen it since and I know I think from what I gathered you are kind of the same way I've definitely seen it I've seen it like this is another one of these movies I've seen it as a kid with my dad I don't think that I've really seen the Blues Brothers in like over a decade, but I remember vaguely, and I don't know if you have trivia about this or not, or if I'm just re- misremembering, but there was a period of time when I was in, like, right in high school, I couldn't find this movie anywhere. Like, you could hmm. only find Blues Brothers 2000, you couldn't find the original. Which is I, bad. Yeah, so I remember, and now, you know, at the time, granted, I was trying to illegally download it, and Justin said that he had a copy of the DVD that he bought in high school. I would assume that I just couldn't find it somewhere, but I remember trying to watch the Blues brothers and there was like a period of time where like i was trying to rewatch in high school and i couldn't find a copy of it and i don't know if they weren't making it or if it like you know maybe it was just on vhs and not on dvd yet or if i missed it or what i remember this i don't have any new i don't have any trivia on that what i do know is that the original cut for this movie was 160 minutes long it was like a road show like when tarantino brought the hateful eight out he wanted to have this road show version where like there was an overture in the beginning and there was an intermission it's kind of this whole like traveling like it's a theatrical event it's not just the movie yeah. you're experiencing like a show and yep. so there was gonna be an intermission or whatever the studio was like no you can't do that yeah. and then they eventually yeah. i think they screened it once some version i think was kind of like this because there's a two hour and 13 minute version and there's a two hour and 28 minute version we both watched the extended one yes i think they screened once a version that was kind of like what we watched, like the two hour and 28 minute one. And then the studio was like, you need to make this shorter. And so we got yeah. 15 minutes. And so the theatrical version was two hours and 13 minutes. And okay. so when Justin said, watch this movie, he told us to watch a theatrical version. And you were like, no, I'm watching the long one. Joey, you watch it too. I was like, all right, fine. Like, well, I don't care. I don't care. In a two hour and 15 minute movie, like how much time are you really saving, right? Like what's the difference? This is this is your $400 versus $500 outdoor set. Yeah. What do you really save in here, bud? Just go I mean, watch it's a very long movie either way, right? Exactly. It's like, yeah. So that's my one complaint. Oh, these, I, the ice cream man's outside. And he just stopped outside my house. He drives around town, but he stopped outside. Maybe he knows we're talking about the Blues Brothers. Ice cream Maybe. cones, and now he's, now he's going again. Anyway, okay. <laughs> my one complaint about this movie, by the end, I was fully on board. But I think, number one, this movie is way too long. I think that it is... I agree. I was talking to my friends, because the Tub Talk guys, we were talking recently about like length of movies, and they were like, every song should be under three minutes, and every movie should be under 90 minutes. So I was like, you can't really argue with that. Like There are movies that... like justify longer but this is kind of just like a goofy silly then becomes over the top comedy and it's two and a half hours long it's like what are you doing they could have high school musical this cut it down but then gave you like all of the full length musical numbers you know what i mean like yeah yeah but, that, yes. but that's just the beginning of it right like because you're still at like even you know they did that and you're still at 215 i really like this movie there's nothing that i don't enjoy about it but at the same time it, it definitely is long because the other thing, and I think this couples with that a little bit, is that this movie takes time to get going. Like, it starts off as a serious movie, then quickly becomes not a serious movie. But, like, him leaving jail, and you don't see John Belushi's face, and, like, they're going for something, then they're going to invert it, and that works. But it takes a while to really get you on its side. And I think once yeah. you get on its side, like, once it wins you over, you're like, okay, cool, I'm here for the ride. But I think the fact that it's very, very long, and that it takes a while to really, like, what is this movie actually trying to be or trying to do? And I think a lot of people who went into this knew them from SNL, right? Like, they knew the Blues Brothers characters. Oh, also, I do want to say, Dan Aykroyd, who wrote this screenplay, his original version was a 384-page screenplay. So just for (laughs) your reference, the rule of thumb is that every page of a screenplay is is about a minute. Yeah. So this is, like, a six-hour, six plus hour thing (laughs) he wanted it to be two movies it was going to be called the return of the blues brothers and so john landis who directed this movie was like we can't do this and he spent three weeks 
cutting it down. So like this original vision of this was like insane. And I yeah. still think what wound up on screen is kind of insane. Oh yeah. But it's still like not at all like what it could have been. Like I think it was always going to be long. If there's somehow a 90 minute version of this, like I would love to see that. Like I don't know if you can. I don't know if the story that it's telling can be told in 90 minutes, but like I would love to see that. I think you can cut some like just when we were talking about this and you were bringing up that it's long, there's a very extended scene where he parks the car under the bridge. Mm-hmm. That's like a two or three minute scene. And like, what do you really get from, like, there's some things you can cut out. This is what surprised me. This is actually what sort of began this kind of tangent is that this movie feels like the kind, I know that like SNL probably has like somewhat of a global appeal, but this feels like the kind of movie, like generally the movies that do well overseas are like action movies because they're like, you don't need to understand the words. You could just understand like the explosions and just sort of be like wowed by the spectacle. And I guess to a certain extent, the music videos essentially that are in this, you know, the extended musical numbers could translate. But I'm still thinking like this is a movie that's gonna do most of its bank in the US and nothing overseas. Okay. But actually fifty point three percent, fifty eight million of the one sixteen it made was done overseas. Like this movie was gonna be like a flop until it kind of did really well overseas, which is kind of baffling to me a little bit. I think you nailed it with what you said. Is it like it was the appeal of having musicians do the musical numbers in it. If you pitch this movie as an American musical, it makes sense. There was a really shitty thing that I read. Let me find out where this was. Universal kept trying to get the filmmakers to replace the blues and soul stars with more contemporary successful acts. John Landis stuck to his guns, but because he did, some large theater chains refused to book it in theaters in white neighborhoods, which is again, yeah, they claimed it was too black. It was a it was a black movie. And did you hear like the? Did you read? Well, well, we read this article, and it was about the cocaine budget of the Blues Brothers. I heard I have this three different trivia bits about cocaine, but go ahead. Yes, in a terrible, terrible bout of racism, they like sat down with one of the theater owners, right? Like a, a large theater chain owner. He's like, "I'll play this in Compton, but I won't play it anywhere else." And he's like, "Why wouldn't you play it anywhere else?" He's like, "I don't want." black people in the white neighborhoods to go see this movie it's not like they're like fringe black performers it's like aretha franklin it's james brown cab calloway it's like huge huge names ray charles like what the fuck yeah it's not like yeah that's what i'm saying dude it was rough that's just very very shitty and i feel bad about it when i was reading that i was like oh i didn't even consider this darkness the dark undertow of the blues brothers like getting this movie made and like where they were playing it and stuff like that and how fucked that is you could market this as just like two white dudes saving blues like it's just the same thing like it's kind of like gosling saving jazz right this could definitely be a white savior movie where like the two white guys save blues and isn't that the like (laughs) like every racist wet dream of a movie right like that's what you want right the two white guys are the heroes in a a very predominantly black movie like the movie was considered mostly a flop until it did well overseas because the budget was 30 million dollars which at the time was one of the most expensive movies ever made yeah at the same time steven spielberg was making a movie called 1941 which i haven't seen i think it's a comedy but it flopped hard like that also starring belushi and dan Aykroyd. yes it's this weird kind of like coinciding thing where like there are rumors that John Landis and Steven Spielberg were having like a friendly rivalry like who can make a more expensive movie and like they both but like this movie did really well well enough to have a sequel that didn't that people kind of hate it's a it's a very expensive movie but also I think something that did not bode well for it is that it was released on the same day as a movie I don't know if you've heard of it it's called Star Wars the Empire Strikes Back oh god <laughs> so even if you're like, I want to go see the new Carrie Fisher movie, it's like, well, which one? It's like, I don't know, oh. the, the good one. Like, not the, not this, but you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, yeah. the biggest movie. Like, people, like, many, many, and, and again, this is Justin's favorite movie. I don't, like, again, I'm saying all this, like, and I really, really like this movie. I love this movie, and I don't, yeah. And I don't mean this to shit on the Blues Brothers, but, No, like, definitely not. I get Blues it. Blues Brothers is a, a people's favorite movie. It's Justin's favorite movie. But then to release it on the day that, like, probably, if you had to say, like, what is the number like <laughs> what is the most people on the planet's favorite movie it might be empire strikes you know what i mean like it, it it's just really like, might be yeah everything was stacked against <laughs> this movie and it still overcame it so wow i know holy fuck dude oh right? god 
god. Everybody was probably, like, amped for fucking Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, they were probably, like, ripped and, like, this was when you get Star Wars, like, waiting outside the theater all weekend. You know yep. what I mean? Like, you can't even buy tickets early. There's no Fandango. So, like, yeah, the, for the Blues Brothers to be released that weekend, it would have to be, like, the only, pe- like, the people that were seeing it were the ones that, like, couldn't get Star Wars tickets somehow. And they're like, okay, well, there's, like, another movie we can go see with, Ca- it also has Carrie Fisher in it, so yeah. we'll just go see that one. A great, that's a great consolation prize, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, these are both great movies. Carrie Fisher is great in both of them, but oh wow. yeah, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so let's talk about the cocaine before we talk about the movie, because I have three different trivia bits about cocaine. Tell me. And then there's another bit, too. So like you mentioned, you can probably fill in a little bit more from that article. According to Dan Aykroyd, cocaine was included in the film's budget to help the cast and crew stay awake during the night shoots. According to Aykroyd, John Belushi enjoyed it the most and felt that it enhanced his performance. Which makes sense, right? This is like the Chris Farley factor, the guy that needs to be like all energy. Yep. I get it. And also like a lot of stress and pressure. Yeah, so Dan Aykroyd claims that he like did cocaine to keep him awake, but John Belushi like did cocaine. John Belushi had to have a handler at some point, right? Something that maybe kind of counters this rumor is that John Landis denies this. But he says at one point, John Landis went into John Belushi's trailer and found a gigantic pile of cocaine, Mm -hmm. which he flushed down the toilet. And then John Belushi got, like, really mad when he found out what he did. John Landis punched John Belushi in the face, and Belushi collapsed into tears. And so, again, John Landis denies this, but it feels like just, like, a charged set with, like, coke-addled actors and crew and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Carrie Fisher's all yacked out, too. If you're the director and you're like, you don't want everybody on coke, like, just, like, it's your job. Just be awake at night. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I don't know. If I was a director, I th- it depends on, like, what level of coke they're doing. If they're doing John Belushi levels where they're, like, not getting out of their trailer and fucked up, then I can see how that's annoying. But, like, if, like, everybody was generally doing, like, a mild amount of cocaine and you were like, oh, I can shoot for 18 hours a day, you'd be like, yep. this is great. Right. So, yeah. The third part is that this is, I think, what you maybe reference with the handler is that when John Belushi wasn't on set, he went everywhere in Chicago. And everywhere yes. he went, people would slip him cocaine, which is in addition to either what's in the rider, what they had, or what he just, like, you know, his dealers or whatever got for him. And apparently, and I don't know why, and this seems kind of shitty, but John Landis told Carrie Fisher, maybe because she's a woman, I don't know, but basically keep an eye on him and keep him away from drugs. No, they were friends. Said, she was also engaged to Dan Aykroyd, though. Like, it feels like a weird... Yeah, but Dan Aykroyd and Carrie Fisher got engaged because... John Belushi was friends with Carrie Fisher. There's also a thing that said Carrie Fisher became engaged to the shoot after he saved her from choking by apparently applying the Heimlich oh. maneuver. So, Ooh, interesting. You know, he saved he saved her life. It's the Chuck Palahniuk choke thing. Yeah. Great. Carrie Fisher said that, like, everywhere, almost everyone on the set either had cocaine, like, was basically like oh, a yeah. dealer or knew somebody who was a dealer or whatever. So, like, it was impossible to keep him in line. I was reading that Dan Aykroyd called John Belushi America's guest. Yes. Do you know that story, though? Do you know why? Yes. Yes. This is really cool because one night they were shooting late. In, like, a parking lot, John just, like, wasn't, like, Belushi just wasn't around, right? disappeared, yeah. And he, like, saw this house that had lights on across the street, like, the only house across the street. And he, like, walks up and, like, knocks on the door. He's like, hey, we're shooting a movie here. Did anybody come in here? And they're like, oh, Belushi? The story that I heard is even, like, crazier than that. It's just, Go ahead, tell me. He went, he was going, like, the only house that had lights on. He was going, he's like, hey, he he had this whole, like, thing, like, you know, I'm Dan Acker, we're shooting a movie, The Blues Brothers, I'm looking for John Belushi. But he knocks on the door, the guy's like, you looking for Belushi? He's like, he's right here. He just came over, asked for a sandwich and a glass of milk and just pass that on the couch. It's like, oh. That's so crazy. It makes me so happy. Can you imagine hanging out with John Belushi in this time in Chicago where he's like a fucking, you know, superstar? Like, there was all these stories about, like, um, Dan Aykroyd said he used to hail um, police cars as taxis. Did you hear this? No, I did not. No. Yeah, he said, like, when they were shooting Blues Brothers, he would just, like, wave his hand, and the police would pull up, and they'd be like, Belushi? He'd be like, yeah, and they'd be like, where are you going? And they'd just hop in the back of the police car, and they would drive him home, like, wherever the fuck they were. It's craziness, man. I mean, there is obviously the dark side of this, that he would die from a drug overdose just two oh, yeah. years after this movie came out, so, like, fame and stardom and everything is a tough toll Pressure, to bear man. in people, and, you know, especially, like, when you're saying, you know, like, when you're the guy who has to always be on, and you can't just be a guy... You know, like, mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd is, like, a comedic actor, and he has to be funny and be on, but he's also, like, a guy who just, like, thinks about aliens. It's like, well, I don't know what you're doing, man, but okay. For yep. John Belushi, like, you can't just be John Belushi, like, at a party. Like, you have to be John Belushi at a party. You know what I mean? So... This is, like, the Burt Kreischer thing. The machine, and, like, he's, like, now that Burt Kreischer is a famous comedian, if you guys don't know, he tells this story that... 
I love Bert as the machine, and he tells a story about like drinking with Russian gangsters. And now that he's told the story, and his life is based off of uh, Van Wilder's based off of his life, that he's like every time like I go on tour now, everybody just wants to get me drunk, right? Like that's the goal of it. Everybody wants to drink with Bert Kreischer. So I can imagine that like yes, if you were John Belushi at the time, everybody just wants to do cocaine with John Belushi, and you also have to be funny John Belushi the whole time, and that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you you'd be really torn, right? Like what version of it is is you and there was like stories of his wife saying that like he wasn't like a super when he was with her he would like just chill on the couch like yeah. he's not like a party animal all the time so it's like that rock star lifestyle man like he had to keep up the image it i sucks. mean how many dorm rooms have a picture of him in the in the shirt that says college right like oh, it's just like thousand, he's, yeah he's that yeah. guy so it would definitely be rough man i do appreciate this movie for giving schlubby guys halloween costume ideas since 1980 it's just like hey we're both out of shape Dude. dudes who like own a black suit what can we be oh we could be the blues brothers yeah and who's the skinnier one you're elwood oh i'm a, yeah, I'm a little bit taller and a little bit thinner but also not really but yeah okay okay i love their suits and honestly i think that this is like one of the crispiest looks between like this and when I was flying home, I was reading the book Mine Hunter, and in the show Mine Hunter, and in the book Mine Hunter, they were talking about like FBI agents had to wear like you know black suit, white shirt, black tie, and I'm like, damn, dude, why do we ever get rid of that look? Like I would wear this every day. I love how clean it looks and like how simple it is. Minus like I, I don't want to like dress like the Blues Brothers every day, but like the black suit, black tie, black leather shoes, yeah, that's like top tier for me. I think it everybody looks good in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's perfect. Well, I have two comments on the attire. There was this whole big trivia on IMDb about the only times that Dan Aykroyd, the only times they ever take off their hats and glasses. And I was just thinking, you know, we just watched Smoking the Bandit, and Bandit only takes his hat off for one thing. And, like, in this movie, Mm -hmm. they're not taking their hats off to have sex, but it's like they very rarely, like, this is the look, and this is who they are, and it's part of their persona. And I think it's kind of funny. I mean, completely different movies. Yes, But, like, yeah. the hats are equally a part of who Bandit and the Blues Brothers are. Yeah, good catch. I agree. That's awesome. The sunglasses and the thing, yeah. The other thing I want to point out was that apparently, according to IMDb, and it makes total sense, that this movie, the new music movement, and also in 1983, a couple years later, Risky Business, these all, like, wildly repopularized the Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Like, they're just like, oh, oh yeah. these cool-ass sunglasses? Yes, absolutely. Tom Cruise, Blues Brothers? Yes, please. Ray-Bans are my favorite sunglasses of all time. Wayfarers, top tier. They're my favorite sunglasses. You know, I'm kind of surprised, to be honest, that, like, we haven't really had sunglasses play a, a dramatic role in the Fast and Furious. Like, I mean, in the, the Ferrari smoke on their sunglasses, but, like, it feels like the, the movies, the Fast and Furious movies, exude cool. That, like, they could just be like, hey, put these sunglasses on. Like, well, but, like, everything just seems sort of like form over or function over form it doesn't seem it's like, like they're all, any... a lot of oakley's yeah there's no like like even to the point where like i asked you like look up their sunglasses you're like they're just kind of generic you know whatever oakley's which like yeah they were like oakley shaped gas station specials right like right so when like, we like looked them up last time it's weird it's like you have such an opportunity it's like you know they're they're clearly also, not shy about putting brands in things like nas yeah. and corona i mean those are i guess for historical purpose like to make sure that they were true to the scene but like you know, as the scene goes on, like Budweiser and whatever, like they don't mind marketing, you know, product placement in movies, like have some cool ass sunglasses, man. And if I could buy like Fast and the Furious edition Wayfarers, you know how fucking sick that would be with like, you know, do it for the buster on the inside or something, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like how fucking cool would that be? I would, I would definitely have a pair of those. Mm-hmm. Like Ray-Ban can't do a little partnership with them. Like, yeah, I don't get it. I, maybe like Oakley did or will. It, it feels like more of like an Oakley branding for Fast and the Furious than ray-ban in my opinion yeah function over form for sure do you have a favorite what's your favorite song or favorite performance in this movie there's probably about half an hour of music in the extended version i like the end scene right before they get in you know what i mean what's the song fuck Minnie the moocher that one is probably the best musical number as we were watching the movie last night we were i was messaging justin like thank you for picking this this is such a joyous movie and it was really what i needed right now we were pausing to like make some dinner stuff i was re-watching that scene because that's awesome but i think the funniest scene and like one of my personal favorites is the rawhide in the fucking bar that's yep. just like so classic right like you play like a theme song of a tv show and like that's what gets them going like 
come on, like that's just it, the the comedy is too beautiful for it not being that like complicated. That was my favorite. I wrote down that I think "Theme from Rawhide" is my favorite song because like they're just dunking on Yeehaws. country bumpkins, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Just, like they're playing great music, and these people are like, "This isn't this isn't the music that I want to listen to" or whatever, and they're throwing. So they play Rawhide, and it's like this was. It reminded me of the movie Roadhouse because like the same kind of like I was gonna you know, say that. Do you think that this is the same bar as Roadhouse? This bar was shot in Georgia. I didn't see anything on IMDb about Roadhouse, but I could Google Roadhouse and it looks so similar to me. I that's the first thought that I had. I said it to Rachel too, like with the chicken wire and the throwing the beers at the band. I was like, this is so Roadhouse to me. I mean, if it's not the same bar, it has to be like modeled after the same kind. Like this has there has to be so many bars were just like dumb. Yeah, was this like a thing in old honky tonks that like, because I, I have no, I, I love classic honky tonk music, right? But like, I have no culture of it. I have no, I, like, I, I never was there. I was never in a place that had it. So like, was that common or is this like, a I, jo- no I guess it has to have been like a, like a real commonality that it had, right? Like, I would think a lot of bars probably had this because like, otherwise, everything, everybody, everybody would be talking about like, Oh, yeah, like that that one bar that was used in Roadhouse and Blues Brothers. Yeah, it must have been more common than we think. On the note of things from a movie, how much... Okay, so they're in Chicago. They go to a nice restaurant. Is this the same restaurant from Ferris Bueller? Oh, well, speaking of Ferris Bueller, today on the High School Slumber Party, weirdly enough, Brian is covering Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Shout out Brian Rodriguez, High School Slumber Party. One of my favorite movies, too. But did just not feel like the Abe Froman Sausage King of the Midwest restaurant? Is it not, like, very similar? And they're yep. in Chicago. So, like, when I was watching that, like, I saw that one. We get to the the honky-tonk, and I'm like, this is fucking Roadhouse. And I was like, are they doing some kind of, like, homage to, like, these other movies? Or are, who was inspiring who and which way did it go? But I feel like these kind of have to be related, right? Like, they're similar. Let's put a pin on that for one second. Let me come back to that in a second. But I Googled, and it took a little while, but Roadhouse Blues is, like, a thing. It's, like, searching Roadhouse and Blues Brothers yeah. doesn't exactly make it. But, like, there's a thing on Reddit from eight months ago, which is actually relatively recently, considering these movies came out in the 80s. Yes. User Zinzai the White Guy, okay, says, okay. in movies from the 80s, like the Blues Brothers and Roadhouse, they depict bars with the band playing behind a chicken wire screen, and the crowd throws bottles at the screen of the band. How common is slash was the installation of chicken wire seemingly for that purpose? And the top Hmm. response says, it's not as common now as it was back in the day, but I'm sure if you go deep enough into the South, you can find bars with a caged stage. Low-end bars with the rowdy patrons had to offer protection to the performers or else they wouldn't be able to get any. So it was a thing. That's cool. That's a fact that I never knew. Like, I mean, seeing Roadhouse and not remembering this, like, I definitely was like, oh, okay, this is a thing, right? But I couldn't tell if this was, like, a common thing or just, like, a Roadhouse thing. Like, are they trying to depict this to be, like, the craziest bar, but then you see it in Blues Brothers and you're like, maybe this was, like, a recurring theme in a bunch of bars. Who knows? So I'm thinking so to bring up your point about the restaurants in this in Ferris Bueller and the bars in these two movies, it feels like either they're the same bar, which seems kind of weirdly unlikely, or they're just the kind of bars that you find in the South and the kind of restaurants you find yes. in Chicago, where it's like people who wrote these things, who grew up in these places, like want to incorporate a part of their history, part of their childhood, a part of their city. Uh, and that so makes it, sense. It makes yeah. sense, right? It's just like, this is the kind of bar the kind of restaurant that I spent a lot of time in, whatever. Like, between Ferris and John Belushi, like, we knew that there was these expensive, like, hoity-toity restaurants out there, but, like, we never ate there, and we weren't supposed to be there, and everybody knew we weren't supposed to be there. So, like, we're going to make a joke about that. Not that, like, they're not talking about one restaurant. They're just talking about their out-of-place feelings at a restaurant like this. Yep. That makes sense. I get it. So now this movie is, so we were talking about when Justin messaged us about this movie and about it being, you know, classic car movie, wanting us to cover it. It's the kind of movie that like you think about, like you don't really think about it as a car movie, but like it very clearly is because if you're naming characters in the movie, there's the Blues Brothers and then there's their car, essentially. Yeah, the Bluesmobile. Yep. Even without that, like even if, you know, you didn't think about it like that, like it has... Two of the greatest car chases, I think, in, like, any movie ever, probably, right? Justin really nailed it. 
this has two of the best car chases we've seen, and we've watched all the great car chase movies. You know what I mean? Like, all the classic ones that, like, people talk about and say are, like, some of the greatest of all time. These two are, like, they're fun. They cause a ton of destruction. I don't know what you could really do to top it. Like, these are great. So there's the chase at the end, which used 500 extras, because it's yes. crazy. Basically, the entire city of Chicago was after them, as they're just trying to pay the $5,000 or whatever to get the orphanage, you know, to be funded. And, like, every time there's a wreck, they wreck, like, 30 cop cars in this wreck. So this movie set a record for wrecking mm-hmm. 103 cars during filming. And then two years later, a movie called The Junk Man, which I don't know, wrecked 150 cars and a plane. And then The Matrix Reloaded in 2003 wrecked over 300 cars. Because I think just like that, they literally built a highway in the middle of the Australian desert to shoot yeah. this movie. Like, of course, they're going to wreck a bunch of cars. Like, why would you not? If you build a highway, like, wreck some cars, right? But Yeah. This is funny. This is the one fact that when I told my dad I watched the Blues Brothers this morning, he was like, you know that they've wrecked like the most cars in that movie of like any other movie at the time, right? And I was like, that's funny that like he spouted off this fact to me. You know, like that was like his Blues Brothers fact. And as a man that doesn't have a cell phone or use the internet, it was funny that this is his you know, he's, he wasn't reading IMDb facts or something. Yeah, as, so. a, as a man who drinks water to get over a heart attack, you know. Yeah, this was <laughs> the manliest fact he could remember, right? What I do love about the car chases and the car scene, we see this a couple times at the end, this movie's version of Nas is basically just stepping on the gas pedal harder. <laughs> like, it... <laughs> It just like he slams it down, like he floors it, and like the car hops. Jumps. Like it's just, it's all, it's insane. I was thinking about it. I was laughing because, um, in the boomer car group, they always talk about like there's like car guy, an old car guy idiom, I guess, or like phrase that they say that like the car was so fast it could jump a Coke can. Do you ever hear this before? No, no, but I mean, we don't run in the same circles online. The idea was, and like, I've heard, you know, old guys say this before, and it's like, when you would step on the gas pedal, like, the, the front would lift up, like Dom's Charger, right? Like, okay. it could ju- it could jump a Coke can from a standstill. Like, there was so much rear torque that, like, the front end would lift up, and you could raise the front higher than a Coke can, so, like, six inches or whatever, seven inches. Whenever he would step on it, the car, like, bunny hops, though, right? Like, he, like, jumps over shit with the, with the gas pedal, which is incredible to me, and that's what I kept thinking of when I was watching. They're encountering, so, like, the car, the Nazi's car which there's Nazis in this movie, and... Very timely. Also very timely is, like, cops and Nazis not being on the same side. Interesting. Interesting. (laughs) Like, the Nazi car at the end falls from basically just, like, infinitely high up and falls through the street, and so there's, like, a car-sized hole in the street, right? Yep. Like an Italian job-sized hole. Yes. And the Bluesmobile is coming up on that hole. All Dan Aykroyd does is he just steps on the gas harder, and Mm -hmm. the car jumps over the hole. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least the movie's man. consistent in like in how they solve problems. There was like another part where like they go off like this bridge and they start flying, like the car starts flying, mm-hmm. and I had to like get Rachel to pause and rewind. I was like, "What did I just mi-? like?" I like looked at my phone for a second, and the car was like, "I saw them going up the bridge," and like I look at my phone, and then like the, what the Nazis were flying too, right? So like mm-hmm. I'm like watching, I'm like, "What the fuck did I miss in this?" It was like, "Oh no, the cars were just flying." Like, okay, cool, yeah. that makes sense. Cars don't fly. That's what Jack says, but cars he's don't wrong. fly. He's got to see Blues Brothers. Exactly. Not only did the car fly, but it, like, metaphorically flies, because they they show the speedometer. So, again, to bring up Jenny's point from an email before, they show foot pedals in this movie. They They do? Gassing and braking. But they Mm -hmm. also show the speedometer, and the car shows, and they actually went... 118 miles an hour like they actually no they got way. permission from the city to do two turns two tears through under like the elevated train they did 118 twice in the city they, they cleared the streets and the second time they added in pedestrians like stunt pedestrians to give it more like a realistic look but what like fuck? yeah they actually did 108 a buck 18 twice and they show they show the speedometer like look how fast these guys are going that's only a cocaine driven idea can you imagine you trying to tell like a movie studio today that you're going to do 118 with your stars or what maybe it was stunt drivers it i don't had know. To be, i think it was probably stunt drivers oh by the way stunt drivers another trivia thing is that john wayne's son ethan wayne who i did not even know existed was a stunt driver in this movie oh that's cool i didn't know so, that yeah so it had to be stunt drivers then yeah probably yeah you're not gonna let you know a coke adult john belushi even if he's not driving like in a, <laughs> in a car as a passenger in a car doing 118 like on i bet city he tried streets, to get in right? there 
I bet he tried to get in there, though. But the other car chase of significant note in this movie is the chase through the mall, which I found that I sent the link. I don't know if you watched the video. I mean, you don't really have to watch more than like a minute of the video, but someone did stop motion recreation of the car chase through the mall, and uh... it's in Lego, and it's incredible. Oh, that's so cool. No, I didn't get a chance to. I was doing work stuff this morning. So they have Sorry. the audio of the movie, and they just have it over them driving the car, driving the Bluesmobile through the mall, crashing through toy stores and kiosks and everything. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to watch. Because, I mean, that chase is amazing. That's just, like, the effort it takes to do stop-motion Lego. It's like, whew. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Very cool. So that mall was, like, a mall that had gone to disrepair. We've also talked about dead malls in here recently, right? Yeah, we did, strangely. Yeah. So it was closed for over a year. Rumors spread that they were going to revitalize the mall. Because they, I guess, saw trucks like doing work or whatever, oh. but it was just the movie studio basically being like, we're going to rent this mall out and just drive around. Okay. And so apparently the city or somebody, some entity, sued Universal Studios for $87,000 for failure to, quote, return the mall to its original condition, which they never agreed upon. And then eventually the anchor store Montgomery Ward was demolished and then the rest of the mall just like rotted. And then in 2012, they finally bulldozed the rest of it. What uh, what fast connections did you see that we have not talked about yet? We start the movie... We literally from the jump, we get a bridge jump mm-hmm. with a with a drawbridge opening and then yep. jumping over it when he when he's trying to tell him that, you know, he has this super fast new blues mobile that's a police car with a police suspension. Cop tires, cop suspension, cop shocks. Yep. Well, even before that, I mean, just like in lockup. I mean, we don't spend a ton of time in prison. But we spend time You're in right. prison in a couple different movies. I have that note, too. Yeah, but it, it was very reminiscent of the Statham Rock in prison type situation going on there, mm-hmm. right? Or even Brian and Braga. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, we get a little bit of a prison shot. I was Something that I was thinking that we need, but also is kind of cool, is we get another jump into water with the Winnebago. We've seen how many times have we seen a jump into water? And on the same note, I was thinking, like, how do we not have more Winnebago's? True. In Fast and the Furious. True. We've never seen one, right? We've had like a bus. We've had like the bus that Cypher or that um Ramsey was on. That's a kind of like a modern Winnebago. But like, I want like a Breaking Bad style old beige and brown. Yeah, the crystal ship. That kind of Winnebago. Yeah. Near the end, you know, the like the Nazis are chasing them. Is this like a thing that like the Nazis are driving station wagons? There were a lot of things that I did not keep in the trivia. There's a lot of like a lot of the Nazi Im- not imagery, but like where they're meeting and why they're meeting and all this different stuff was like modeled after real life events from the 70s. So possibly that like Nazis like station wagons. I mean, I don't know, German engineering, maybe? I don't know. No, because it's a Ford Pinto. Then maybe not. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I was looking at them and I was like, is this like, like I could see if they were like Volkswagen, like, oh, OK, they're driving like German cars, right? Like you were saying. But no, it's like it's they're just driving Ford Pinto station wagons. And like, why? What kind of Nazi shit is that? Like, I just I just don't get it. What do we kind of? fast connections that you have i have those i'm trying to see one that we didn't have that i feel like we could have and it's not really a fast connection but it's like a too fast too forever connection is that i can't believe like they're going around and assembling a team right they're like we need to play music we need like all of our band we're getting the band back together right and one thing that we've said recently especially on this podcast i can't believe we haven't got we didn't get a single you son of a bitch i'm in like it feels like that's like what everybody could have said and nobody says i was like maybe it's out of character for like aretha franklin to say that but like no but like oh man john belushi needed to give me a you son of a bitch i'm in like when he gets the car and he's like you pick me up in a cop car and he's like you son of a bitch i'm in like once they jump the bridge or something yeah fuck man oh you just gave me like a huge negative in this movie by bringing up that they could have said that we also have and it's again not a fast connection but it's movies that we have covered but there's the scene at the gas station when they're trying when they're on when they're due on stage and they're just like getting gas or whatever and so again we were talking about how we yeah we never see any gas stations in any movies and then we've had like a handful of you know classic car movies this lap but then that british woman shows up right twiggy she was like a super famous supermodel you know this right oh that was twiggy yes yeah they like show her at the end too in the credits credited as chic lady yes Okay. But they, like, at the end, like, once the movie finishes, they're like, and this is Twiggy, and this is Aretha Franklin. Gotcha, okay. But what I thought about her entire appearance here was that it reminded me a lot of Vanishing Point and Ooh. how that whole thing at the end, because we just we just did Vanishing Point on the uh, film club that we run, and people, yes. like, talking about the difference in the U.S. and the U.K. version. But it's kind of, like, ethereal, because, like, I get that, like, Elwood is supposed to be, like, this, like, cool, hip guy or whatever. He's dressed in cool. He's on a, a mission cool from car God. Whatever, a mission from God. But he's like, hey, 
if your date doesn't go well, meet me at this motel and like basically let's let's just have sex all night. And she's like, maybe I'll take you up on that Elwood. Like it's it feels a little too ethereal and floaty. And I get that's a joke. Like I get that he's just kind of a schlubby guy and like this woman is into him. And I think that's funny, but it just feels all kind of dreamlike, a little bit like Vanishing Point. Like is this real or is this just make believe? Yeah, is this his imagination of like how this played out? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. But I do like after they're there for way too long, and then they're like, oh, shit, we gotta go. And then they just, you know, get out of there. And, and set the gas station on fire and blow it up. Another fast-ish connection, you know, more so to another movie. We find out that Carrie Fish was credited, I think, as Mystery Woman. And the entire movie, she's just trying to kill the Blues Brothers. Yes. The reason she is upset is because she was jilted. She was a jilted lover, I think, left at the altar, just mm-hmm. like in Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, that's right. I didn't even make that connection. Sally Field and, you know, Carrie Fisher, two famous, wonderfully charming, lovely ladies from the 70s and 80s. Yeah, damn. Good one, brother. I didn't, I didn't make that connection at all. I have the ultimate Fast and the Furious question for you. Okay. <sighs> Something we've talked about a lot, and I think that we need to address it. Who does more destruction Ooh. the family or the blues brothers on a per movie average basis probably the blues brothers in total i think family just because they've had nine movies to mess stuff up but i think but also remember that the blues brothers like as much as like the car has superpowers like the blues brothers aren't superhumans like the family right right like yeah. they're they're normal guys like they don't have like super strength or like you know, like crazy things. Like they're just musicians. I still think, I think in total, just across the eight movies, them dragging a safe through the streets of yeah. Rio, them doing this, them doing that, whatever. I think cumulatively, it's the family. I don't think it's even close. Of course. But no, not even close. But I'm saying average. average basis, Blues Brothers probably haven't beat. Yeah, th- I think that this is like one of the first runs for our money that we've gotten on a per movie basis, right? It's like the first thing that, and we haven't even talked about the, you know, we keep bringing up like Avengers and bringing up Sokovia and bringing up how they wreck stuff. But yeah, it's uh, for a movie that's not a superhero movie that doesn't have superhero-esque yep. characters, pretty destructive. Yeah, and I kept thinking like when all the cop cars were going off the like the lanes, like in between the lanes and the highway and they kept like stacking on top of each By other. By the way, really quickly, yeah, they, they wanted to do that and like they couldn't get it to work. So they like dig a big hole on the side of the highway so they could actually hit the hole and like flip because it <laughs> seems like an easy thing to do like they just couldn't get it so like to wreck all those cars they had to like dig a hole that the (laughs) cop cars would hit and then tumble through so yeah that's awesome but it reminded me of the cypher cars out the building scene Mm, you know what i mean yep Mm -hmm. that's what it was really reminding me of just like the way that they like drop and like look so like real physically like just hood crashing down yeah i was thinking about that a lot when i was watching that scene yeah, for sure. Kind of like car lemmings in a way. Yeah, exactly. Another vehicle? I don't know if that's the right phrase here that I don't know that we've gotten in Fast and Furious, not only the Winnebago, but we also have police on horseback. We don't have any horses, I don't think, in the Fast and Furious. I mean, we have a Mustang, Ooh. of course. We have a horse picture <laughs> in the Toretto house in 1327, but no actual horses. Yeah, but we've said this before, like, we have a we have a severe lack of animals in, in Fast and yeah. Furious. True, true. Like, all we get is the iguana, really. They're, like, nobody has any pets. We don't get, like, a tiger or something, the bear that they have to fight nothing man so yeah the horseback thing i would like to see some cops on horseback they need to do more races in non-traditional vehicles yeah like i want to see like dom and brian race on a razor scooter or something right oh did you hear the uh i don't want to call it sad news but apparently segway is no longer making the segway they've officially discontinued the segway so what do they make now or is they just i I don't know if they went out of business but i just i mean I didn't read the article, because why would I read an article about that? But I saw the headline that Segway is discontinuing its two-wheeler. So maybe they have other products, I don't know. But the Segway as we know it, died today. Pour one out. Pour one out for the Segway. Yeah, damn. Rachel's mom loves Segways and loves uh, Segway tours. I was going to ask if she ever taken a tour, but I would imagine so. If you love Segways, you probably have taken a Segway tour. Like, she did a Segway tour, like, reluctantly somewhere, and was like, this is the most fun ever. When we, I was at, I was in D.C. for work, and Rachel came with me, and her mom and her took a Segway tour together of D.C. I was like, you guys lived here? And they're like, yeah, but this is fucking awesome. So she's a big Segway fan, <laughs> apparently. Like, I've never known, like, anybody to be like, I really like Segways, but, like, she loves them, so. I don't think I have any more notes. I have a few more trivia bits, but is there anything other, any other notes, any other fast that you have about the Blues Brothers, which, by the way, if you want to watch this movie, is 
<laughs> available on Stars. I mean, again, yeah. I'm going to keep plugging Stars until they, you know, let us down. But you can watch us on Stars if you want. Also, by the way, I saw a thing on Facebook. You can get like six months of Stars for like 25 bucks. So like, oh, as much bad. as I joke about it, like, if you want to watch a lot, seemingly like a disproportionate amount of the movies that we've that covered we this lap, Stars is not a bad bad idea. No, it's definitely not. The only last the last thing that I wanted to say, which if you're listening or watch this movie, you know it. But there's just like so many quotables in this movie, right? Like we we brought up a mission from God. This is hilarious to me. The line where they're like, they stop them and they're like, are you the police? And he's like, no, ma'am, we're musicians. Like that one just sends me every time. Like, I don't know why, but it just like, it's so perfect. No, I, I, I get that often, but I'm just a musician. You know, it's like, what the fuck? There was uh, one quote that I wrote down when I think it's a, when they're probably going to jump over something or have to like accelerate because they say, our lady of blessed acceleration, don't fail me now. Just like <laughs> the patron saint, like, you know, it's the car gods, but it's just the patron saint of going fast, I guess. I don't know. I didn't catch that one. That, I like that one a lot. That's that's really good. Our, our lady of blessed acceleration. Is yeah, that what they said? Our lady of blessed acceleration, don't fail me now. That's perfect. So speaking of the Catholic Church, for the 30th anniversary of the movie, which was 10 years ago, 2010, the Vatican newspaper L'Osservatore Romano, I guess the Roman Observer, uh, called the film, quote, a Catholic classic and recommended it as good viewing for Catholics. No way. That's what IMDb says. That has to be like some kind of wacky joke. But I could definitely see, like, this is a movie that I could definitely see, like, one of the popes really loving. Like, Pope John Paul was like... Yo, dude, but fucking Blues Brothers is hilarious. <laughs> like, to, like, his Cardinals, you know? He's like, guys, Saturday night, like, you know, like, the, whatever the Oval Office is of the Vatican, like, come meet me there. We're, like, laying out chairs. We're going to watch the Blues Brothers again. Shit's wild. Yeah. <laughs> the only other trivia that I have, because I actually did a better job than I normally do of weaving it in, is that John Belushi was nicknamed, quote, the Black Hole, because he went through hundreds of pairs of sunglasses during production. He would do a scene and then lose the pair before the next. So I guess, you know, the sunglass That's budget awesome. has to be crazy expensive, right? So One of our friends, um, we describe him as as quicksand whenever you're with him you'll go to do anything and you just get sucked you get sucked into jose quicksand he'll be like okay like we're you know we're gonna go get food and it's like three hours later you still haven't gotten food because you're just stuck in this quicksand of like him doing all this other bullshit for no reason i get the black holeness i get the quicksandness cool. but that's really fun he lost so many sunglasses imagine if you had like a nice pair like if he lost that many pairs of sunglasses you could easily like get a pair of jim belushi blues brother sunglasses then right yeah just like basically be anywhere near the set you could probably pick up a pair right yeah that would be a really cool movie prop to have even if there was a thousand of them like it'd be really cool to be like oh yeah i had a pair one even if he didn't even wear them right he's like holding them or something it's like okay cool all right are you ready to watch the trailer for the blues brothers oh yeah so this is what i was saying before this trailer for some reason is four and a half minutes long oh it's called blues brothers official trailer number one dan Aykroyd movie 1980 hd from movie clips classic trailers I searched on YouTube for Blues Brothers trailer, and there's another one that's like two and a half minutes, which I was like, oh, that's normal length, but there's no like MPAA thing, there's no title cards, it's just like two and a half minutes of scenes, and I don't know what this is, but this must have been, I don't know, I don't understand it. It I don't fits know. the length of the movie, right? <laughs> like a normal movie, you get two minutes, yeah. a two hour and 30 minute movie, you get four minutes. Yeah, I'm ready whatever you are, brother. Okay. Three, two, one, play. Okay, rated R. There we go. Come on. So I like that they have the the loud, the, like the megaphone on top of their car to attract yes. attention for the the shows they're doing. I also like this is them in the tunnel. They have like the very, very, very cozy parking space where it's just like basically car width that they have to park in. That you know, Elvis the under the bridge. The yep. Yeah. Oh, the music. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, Carrie Fisher hunting him. Yeah, she, like, I don't know if we said it explicitly, but, like, all, I mean, I think I did, but, like, she's trying to kill them in different ways all movie. She, like, blows up building after building, she shoots at them, all this different crazy stuff. Yeah, this creepy Jesus that's, like, hanging in the corner right there that was, like, on the angle was so funny to me. There you go, there's your quote. Yeah. Oh, I like the, I like the gospel church scene, too. Is that Richard Pryor in there? It kind of looked like him, but... I don't think it's Richard Pryor. Because he would have had like more of a comedic role. You don't understand it. No, yeah. Q of County has include Richard Pryor. He yeah. is in the movie. Oh, fuck. It was him then. Good spot, brother. Them driving through a Toys R Us when Toys R Us just went out of business like in the past year or two made me really sad. 
Like, man, I miss that. It's crazy to me that John Landis was only 30 years old when he directed this movie. Yeah. And he had done Animal House, right? Wasn't that the whole thing? He had done Animal House, yeah. He also directed Coming to America, which Kyle covered in movie films. He did I Beverly Hills Cop 3, America. Three Amigos, American Werewolf in one, uh, London. Damn. Oh, the Jailhouse oh, also, Rock yeah, scene. Jailhouse yeah. Rock, Viva Pod Vega. Shout out the podcast that Mike and I are doing about Elvis yep. movies, but that we have put on hold because we can't record in person right now. Yeah. Ray Charles. The Ray Charles thing was cool. Shooting at the wannabe shoplifter. Yes. I love the musical oh, numbers in this movie. What? Another fast connection of, I, like, remember fuck. saying cars full yep. off trucks, but this car flew into the truck, another cop car into a truck? Which kind of reminded me of the car onto the boat, too. Yes. In two. But I think, what was it, Smoking the Bandit, where it, like, gets on the truck, I think? We talked about because you mentioned the, yes. the, the boat there, yep. too. Yep, I did. Exactly. I like them driving just, like, straight through things and into buildings. It's a lot of fun. Like, those are, like, stunts you can't really fake with CGI right here, you know? Did you hear the thing that, like, um, John Belushi had, like, fucked up his knee right before this final scene? Yes. Because he was, yeah. like, he's, he's, like, fucking around on a skateboard. Yeah, he, like, saw this kid skateboarding by, took his skateboard, and then fucked up his knee really bad. And he had to, like, shoot this whole scene with, like, a cortisone shot. I do appreciate this This trailer is basically in the structure of the movie, which is like, okay, Chaos. plot, and then, okay, musical interlude, and then plot, and then musical interlude. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this, yep. this trailer is very spoiler. I mean, it's four and a half minutes long, but we also have, like, I don't know what this movie's about. Yeah. It's just great. It's... Belushi. John Belushi. Oh, my God. <laughs> How much for the girl? <laughs> That part really got Rachel. She was cracking up when he was doing the the restaurant scene. James Brown. Oh, with um, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman as a uh, yes, Paul yeah, Rubens. Yeah, he's a, in it too. Pee Wee Herman. Yep. There's oh your, there's God. Your head, yeah, that's the best. That's the best musical number. Like I know that this is just like a guy who did a lot of voices for things, but the way that he's saying the names makes it sound like it's a horror movie. It does. You're right. Yeah. It does, like, read the Frank Aretha Franklin murdering people. Stay inside. By the way, I think I had, like, a, a weird crush on Aretha Franklin in this movie. Like, she just looks so wholesome. Before we do. And the Blues Brothers. Yeah, I think. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, the sauna scene was great. The sauna scene is great. I really enjoy it. Oh, there you go. There was the... No, ma'am. We're musicians. There's your one. <laughs> That was a great trailer. I mean, it ruins everything. Like, I, it, <laughs> but like that was a really good trailer. Yeah. All right. The last game we have to play is the letterbox game, and I had to struggle a little bit to Aww. figure this out. But I found, I, I got it. I got there Why? in the end. But how? Explain. I'll, I'll, I'll explain later. I, I can't. I don't want to spoil it yet, but I will. Okay. So for reference sake, Mad Max Fury Road has been seen by 586,000 people on Letterbox. The Blues Brothers from 1980, directed by John Landis, starring Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, James Brown, etc., etc., has been seen by how many people? I'm going to say 65,000. Higher. 85,000? Higher. 120,000. 109,419. Oof, I knew it was going to be huge. Yeah, I knew it was going to be huge. Out of those 109, 419, how many people have put it in their top four? Actually, average rating of 3.9, most common rating of four, second most common rating of five. So people love this movie. 3,500. Lower. Kind of a lot lower. Still a lot of people, but a lot lower than 3,500. 1,500? 1,300. That's a, that's a lot, man. So a lot of I knew people that love this I movie. knew that people were gonna love this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I struggled. The reason I struggled here is because I was trying to find because my goal for this last part of the game is to find someone who has a picture, who has given it five stars, who likes yes. it, who has written a review. Yep. And then I go to their profile and I try to find someone who has four movies that you could ostensibly guess. And yes. weirdly, and this happens a lot, but I've never seen it this often. So many people have fewer than four favorite movies, and this is one of them. So it's just like the Blues Brothers and another random movie. And so oh. it's hard to play. Like it's just a bunch of those, and then a bunch of movies that like. It feels like this is the kind of movie that like anybody could lump in with their favorites. Like there were some that I was like, it's three classic movies in this. It's three like comedies. Like it's just all over the place. Food all over the place. Whatever. So I found, and I don't know if this is a great one. But it's the best one I could find. From Caden Bassett at Caden Bassett 18, 
in all capital letters, his review, Dan Friggin' Aykroyd, a genius as writing comedy movies that are so simple yet so detailed, I die every time. It's a great the review. use of the That's elevator true. scene made me think of Ghostbusters, and I can't help but love every second of this movie. Five stars. We didn't even talk about Ghostbusters. Even Dan Aykroyd even says in this movie, who are you going to call? And then, you know, four years later, Ghostbusters. I said that too. I said that when we were watching it with Rachel. He says, who are you going to call? And I was like, Ghostbusters. And she laughed, yes. Caden Bassett has The Blues Brothers as his number three movie. Okay. You can at least get two. I don't know that you can get the fourth one, but the top two you can for sure get. Number two, easiest one. What movie that we want to do for this podcast just got double canceled in Hollywood. Baby Driver. Baby Driver. His number two movie, Baby Driver. Yeah, Ansel Adams, right? Ansel Isn't his Elgort. name Ansel? Ansel Adams is a famous artist, I think. Okay. Yeah, but Ansel, I do, yeah. Ansel Ansel Adams, star of Baby Driver, Ansel Adams. <laughs> number one movie is... I could, I, I don't want to just slam dunk it, but okay. it's a movie that you tend to guess a lot in this game. It's a popular movie that people love. Okay. It's also a movie that is very close to Mike and My Heart. So if you think about the movies like that we ostensibly have covered on the podcast network, what's a movie that you think, and I don't know if you even remember, what's a movie that you guess a lot in this game? Pulp Fiction. No, we've actually never covered it. We never covered Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I know, but I was you were saying a movie that I guess a lot. A movie that I guess a lot that you and Mike love. That we've covered, yep. Is it yep. Mission Impossible? No, nope. different Speed. actor. Uh, same actor now, but no. Bill and Ted? Nope. Oh, um, fucking, oh, god damn it, I always forget his name. Um, the, the one where Keanu plays the Avenging the Dead Dog. Yes, John Wick, which is actually funny, I can't remember the name, because I don't remember, like, news broke a couple of weeks ago that that movie had another name, but then every time Keanu would talk about it in interviews, he's like, yeah, I'm doing this movie called John Wick, and the director was like, I don't really, I really don't want to change the name. And the studio was like, you just have, you got $15 million or whatever in, in free money and free impressions for this movie called John Wick. It's called John Wick now. Um, yeah. So it's funny that you couldn't remember John Wick because Keanu couldn't or wouldn't remember the original title. I keep thinking, whenever I think about it, I think of John Carpenter, like Halloween. So like, I don't know why, but like, I can never remember John Wick. It's like one of these things that like, just has been completely deleted from my brain. The Baba so. Yaga. All right, and then yeah. number four, oof, I don't know how to get you to guess this. I would guess that you've seen this movie. It's an action comedy uh, that came out about 10 years ago. It came out exactly 10 years ago. It came out in 2010 that The Rock is in. The Rock the is start. in. Is it Tropic Thunder? Nope. You're in that ballpark. But okay. it's not those guys. It's a different crew in that vein. Also, Ava Mendes is in it. Monica Fuentes herself. Oh, fuck, what is it? Not it Tropic stars. F- keep going, yeah. The star of your favorite comedy, one of your favorite comedies. Will Ferrell's in it. Mm-hmm. Will Ferrell in an action movie? An action? Is it um, action comedy? Yep. Kevin Hart's in it. No. Nope. Will Ferrell action comedy. Mm-hmm. Action though. Mm-hmm. Talladega Nights? No, because nope. Rock's not in that. His co-star in this movie is Mark Wahlberg. What is it? The Other Guys. Oh, The Other Guys. I don't think I've ever watched that movie all the way through. So John Wick, Baby Driver, The Blues Brothers, The Other Guys. Damn, that's an interesting line. I mean, I guess it's not. I, they're all kind of related. It's not like and, it's like very crazy, right? Like, I can see it. And in the last 11 days, he has watched all eight Rocky movies, which, good on you, man. Yeah, good job, brother. I think that's everything we got. So we got to announce. We got to talk about what we're doing next week. Okay, go ahead. Actually, just first first of all, thank you, Justin, for picking this movie. It thank was you, a lot Justin. of fun. I and needed thank it. Thank you for supporting us on Patreon. If you want to, so here's the thing. We are uh, rapidly approaching lap seven which is the michelle rodriguez slash missing pieces lap which we announced on episode 100 but once that lap starts we're going to unveil to the patrons the next three laps because lap eight begins in december eight nine ten is basically all of next year and so that's right yeah as of right now as long as we keep doing two episodes a week and if we were able to weather the storm that you just weathered we can keep doing two a week i think for the i think i think so with proper planning yes like minus the like emergency chaos of last week i think we're doing pretty good so just putting this out there into the world and i don't know if we're like overthinking things but like there might be episodes where we just like only do an intro where we only talk about a movie or something like if we can't do both parts or something but like we'll address that when we get to it that's a bridge that we don't need to cross until hopefully never but who knows hopefully never amen because these next so as we're doing two a week 
there's, you know, basically double the amount of movies that we're going to cover, or really almost kind of triple, whatever. And yeah. so everyone at the $10 tier on Patreon gets one pick per lap. So next yep. lap, starting next lap, you know, in the next month or so, we're going to unveil to the patrons at, at TooFastTooForever.com the, the themes for eight, nine, and ten. So we have... I'm excited. Three. I don't even know what they are, guys. I mean, I do, but I don't remember what they are. So. Yeah, this is all... We, you and I figured this out before your life imploded for a week yes uh, so i don't i don't hold it against you for uh not remembering but we're gonna unveil these and so if you're at the ten dollar tier you have to pick something for each lap for us to talk about so a lot of exciting things so anyway thank you justin if you want to can basically my, my point of saying all that was that if you want to pick something like pick three movies for us to talk about next year mm-hmm. ten dollars a month at too fast too also by the way you well, and i were talking about this yesterday we think because and again no one has done this yet it's a crazy amount of money but because now laps are twice as long as they used to be, that $25 a month tier where you plan an entire lap is like, oh, this is actually like a lot more pressure, Power. but also like Power. it's a lot scarier. It's a lot more, you get a lot more wiggle room. Like you can, you can really control what we do for a long ass time. Yes, true. And so we locked it, which you can do on Patreon, that there's only one of those available. Again, I don't think there's, like it's not in high demand because we've been doing this for, like yeah. we've been on Patreon up for like a year or a year and a half or whatever, and no one has done that. But $25 a month, there's only one of those left. And then if someone does that, we'll re-add it as like a higher price point or something. But just yes. putting it out there, if you want to plan an entire lap, any theme you want, any movies, any TV shows, or whatever, this is the blank, you know, Jerry Robinson lap or whatever. You know what I mean? Like whatever, whatever. you want us to yeah. be. Just putting it out there, $25 a month, only one, and once every four laps. Maybe. We'll figure that out. Was, that might we'll be too f- much. You get to do an entire lap. So just put it yeah. out there. Too fast, too forever.com. But okay, okay, next week. We are doing, we are going to do this week, the one that we had to push back, Hobbs and Shaw on Tuesday. Because, of course, yes. got to get back of to the course. grind. Yep, we're going to go right back to Hobbs and Shaw. We'll have the, the character quiz stuff's done. We'll be good. Then, next Friday's episode is another wildly long movie that I have never seen, that I've been meaning to see, and that everything that I read about online, people can't stop saying enough of great things about it. From 1963, it's a mad, 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 mad world. I don't know if you just said this to me or if my dad was just talking about it. I don't think it was me. It was probably your dad. Maybe he brought it up and was saying it when we were talking about car movies, and I totally didn't... Yeah. Okay, maybe. Well, I think he recommended it then. Because <laughs> there was, there's trivia, or there was something that I was reading that, like, the Roadshow version, or, like, they compared it to the Blues Brothers because, like, this wildly over-the-top. And, like, everything I've read is basically, like, they could never make this movie today. And not for, like, un-PC reasons, but it's just, like, yes. there's so much going on that, like, whatever the movie is could not happen today. Yeah, so next Friday sense. we're doing that. And also, as a, as a heads up, apparently, I don't know if, and this is not to you necessarily, but to everybody, I don't know that they, the version, the ultra-long version, whatever they call it, there's a name for it, okay. is widely available everywhere, but it's on the Criterion channel, so there's a free trial oh, for nice. that. It's a great service, so like, if yeah. you want to do that, it's available there. So like this wildly long version, I'm very excited to talk about It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, so... Yeah. Same. I'm yeah, I'm down to watch it. Cool. Hobbs and Shaw and the Mad World next week. But for all things Too Fast Too Forever, you go to cageclub.me, Facebook.com slash too fast too forever or at too fast too forever on Twitter and Instagram. Email us, family at cageclub.me. Check out yeah. our Patreon page at too fast too forever.com. Again, one left. Only one. Twenty five dollar a month. Yeah. When I see that come in, I'm gonna get I am gonna get excited and then instantly nervous you're gonna make joey shit himself like he out of be excitement cold sweats and the nerves cold yes, sweats of anxiety because it's gonna be a blend of my oh i don't have to plan a thing and then also just like oh i have no control over the situation yes which we know how much you love that so. oh boy uh yeah so one of those left at too fast too thanks for hanging with us guys that's it like i appreciate yes. like everybody like reaching out like even though you guys are all like really cool for the past week so Thanks. Thank you all so very much. Email again, family at cageclub.me. We loved hearing your thoughts and your well wishes and even things that aren't even about the podcast, like Ben saying happy Father's Day or just the fucking you know, dream Haley. about yeah. food all over the place, like top tier. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Family at cageclub.me. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. And we'll see you next time right here on Too Fast, Too Forever. Peace out. Peace out. Anus. Anus. Peace out. Peace out.